It's time for Twig this week in Google. Jeff Jarvis is joined by Matthew Ingram from Fortune Magazine. We're going to talk about the latest Google news. In fact, some big news coming out of Britain. Is it the end of free speech? We'll find out when we talk Twig next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 300, recorded Wednesday, May 13th, 2015. Party on, Elon! This Week in Google is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash twig and entering the promo code TWIG. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100 plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Twig. It's time for Twig this week in Google. Jeff Jarvis is here in between his travels hither and thither. And yawn. And yawn. I want to say, what's the I opposite yawn of yawn? Hither weeks. and thither, here and yawn. What is yawn? You know what it is? I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Wherever uh, you're it is, it's an eight-hour flight away and I'm going there. You're going to go where? Helsinki? To yawn. To Jan. <laughs> I'm staying at Jan's place in Helsinki um, for one day. Helsinki for Newsgeist. Ah. Google making nice with European publishers, and we'll soon talk about Facebook being Should nice be with worldwide publishers. Yeah. Ah, I hear Matthew Ingram. Great to have you. Formerly of GigaOM, and glad that uh, Matthew, like many of the other, uh, your uh, your colleagues at GigaOM, uh, landed at Fortune. Mm -hmm. And you're you're in that group, and that's so great. Yeah, this is so great. great. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, unfortunately, Matthew uh, had all of his stuff stolen in Italy. But what the heck? That was the old GigaOM gear. Yeah. All so new fortune I needed, gear. I needed to upgrade anyway. So. Yeah. That's nice. Hey, what's what's Ohm going to be doing? Do you know? He's investing you know, still. He's, he's doing what he's doing, right? So. Yeah, he had kind of left. He had left the day-to-day -day operations of GigaOM anyway. He I had, yeah. yeah. About a year before. Well, give uh, if you ever talk to him, we got to get him on. Would you? Let's get him on, sure. uh, Jason. Yeah, that's, I love that's a great him. idea. Yeah, love him. He's been kind. I know he's been kind of in mourning a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah, poor guy. Um, let us talk about Google, the um, Metaverse, the Universe, the Googleverse, the Twitterverse, the Facebookverse, the, face, the Faceverse, the Faceverse. Um, and anything we want to talk about, this show is a show for, uh, for and by smart people. Not so smart in Great Britain. David Cameron, the prime minister of Great Britain, just off of his surprising election victory, uh, people thought it was going to be closer than it was. The conservatives won a majority, and now Cameron is taking advantage of his majority by, I'm curious what you guys think of this, limiting the Queen's speech. Cameron, a great article by Glenn Greenwald in The Intercept. He calls Cameron's decree Orwellian. Quoting Cameron, for too long we've been a passively tolerant society, saying to our citizens as, quote, as long as you obey the law, we'll leave you alone. It's not enough for British citizens merely to obey the law. They must refrain from believing in or expressing ideas which Her Majesty's government dislikes. Oh, yeah, that's I, I can't understand how a modern politician in a, in a country like Britain could say those words. I just don't understand what is going through his mind when he says something like well, that. Well, the issue is, I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree that if it's terrorist speech, maybe, uh, you know, if it's something. But it's it's how do you know? What do you how do you define that? Right. That's who defines it. In that's the UK, the they don't have, as we do in the US, a First Amendment. No. Nor a Section 230. And it's pretty obvious. The yeah, it really is. The First Amendment says the government shall make no law abridging the right for speech. Now, of course, there is, in the U.S., even with the First Amendment, there is speech that's prohibited. 
but it's pretty clear. You know, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. Um, this sounds, this, you, you literally will not be able to tweet. <laughs> I don't know what you could say in 140 characters. It would be so damaging to the uh, British democracy. Facebook postings, tweets, and of course, articles. This bill um, will be, is proposed. I, 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 does he have to get it approved? I, I presume so. It's hard to it's, tell. Is it still yeah, a democracy? The, the, the Queen's speech is his agenda to Parliament. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it's it's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be an anti-extremist bill. Uh -huh. Be unveiled in the. I, I love this, uh, Glenn Greenwald. Um, to stop those who seek to undermine our British values and instead ensure, quote, we are together as one society, one nation. Parenthesis says Greenwald. I personally believe this uh, was all more lyrical in its original German. <laughs> 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 well done, Glenn. Well done. If you wanted to tweet, you would have to submit to the police in advance. But Any who has to do that? Extremists. I don't understand. Oh, ext oh I see. What, what, what's what's oh, your so extremist? extremist? Are you a oh, self? Okay. Are you a self-identified extremist? Well, some say I'm an extremist. <laughs> well, right. Um, if you seek to undermine democracy, I mean, you have to kind of read the tea leaf between the lines to even understand what they're talking about. If you seek to undermine democracy or use hate speech in public places, but you are allowed to provoke hatred. <laughs> Super. Um, it will also include new powers to close premises, including mosques, where extremists seek to influence others. I think that all in all, hate speech is a dangerous doctrine as well. Yeah, I do too. We kind of have that, though. Don't we have limits on what we you... We do. We do more and more. But, but, but you know, we, the, 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 the classic American example is that we allowed the Nazis to march in Skokie. And so it, to protect speech, we protect even noxious speech. And that's right. an American belief. And, you know, now on some campuses, it's getting pretty ridiculous. Uh, well, that, 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 that speech not only offends me or it puts me in, it makes me feel unsafe or I, I, I it, it, you know, it's just, and this is, this is classic works. Um, ideas don't hurt people. Um, being able to deal with ideals, ideas is exactly what we should be doing in a democracy and in education. Good and or we bad have, ideas. In in Canada, we have a sort of half American, half British approach. Yes, you do. I mean, so we have uh, hate speech laws, and and we have we don't have a sort of any kind of amendment that protects free speech. But there's a real tension, at least here, between you know wanting to promote free speech, but still having that kind of British history of um, some things you just shouldn't say. Right. So the Harper government, it sounds like, is threatening to charge people with hate speech for promoting boycotts of Israel. So, you know, you could probably, you know, that would fit just about anything. Like there would be lots of things that could fall under the that broad definition, depending on who you're talking about. It's kind of That's shocking. Who defines it? Kind of shocking. All right. I, I thought I'd bring that up. That just, uh, that's uh uh, just crossed our wires. Late breaking, late breaking crap. news. Uh, but uh, there is a whole lot to talk about. Well there beyond is. that. And since apparently our last show was more than two uh, two and a half hours long, I think we're <laughs> going to try. Right, to, Jason. I will get right to it. <laughs> right to it. Uh, let's start with Verizon AOL. That's a big story mm -hmm. that broke a couple That's of a days ago. Four point four billion. Now some people say, well, "See, AOL was still worth something." That's not a whole lot. No, it's not. It's more than the New York Times is worth, but... Yeah. Verizon buys AOL. It was... Go ahead, Matthew. AOL was worth, what, I don't know, $300 billion or something. Yeah, what was, was the that? Time Warner uh, merger? What was what were they valued? Plus, I think. Yeah. Time Warner AOL. Where'd all that go? 164. Oh, the, well, the actually, wags? that was the opposite direction, because AOL bought Time Warner, or although for $164 billion. Yes. Uh, but Time Warner is not still part of AOL, right? No. Although that is legendary, that 2001 merger is the biggest mistake in corporate history. <laughs> I should have I should have saved all the tweets to a collection. The, the wags of Twitter were in the finest form for this oh, yeah. one. 
for the AOL uh, oh, Verizon. Yeah, 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 it was beautiful. Well, it raises a couple of issues. Uh, you oh, know, oh, Engadget oh. is part of AOL. Will they be now that they're a Ver uh, house organ of the Verizon? Uh, company, uh, will they be as, uh, will they get as much freedom as they've had? If they don't like a phone, can they say it? There's, you know. That's... Look at the history, look at the history of Ver Verizon. It's, it's not good. They tried, tried to start a text site that would say nothing controversial and they killed it. Um, Sugar you know, String. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, thank you. What was it called? Sugar String. <laughs> and then. Um, the late so lamented Sugar String. They also, <laughs> they also can't <laughs> name things well. <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> name ever. Someone who I always I thought when the company started when they changed the name of of the telephone company I thought it was a French name Verizon Verizon because it used to be Nine X which is a good name the New York yeah. New England a telephone exchange or something like right. that. So Sugar String they said that you shouldn't write about net neutrality, and so someone <sighs> reported that and they eventually shut it down. It, uh, Verizon says, as you know, we've always said this was a pilot project. <laughs> we never said we were serious about. Sugar string. So, okay, so they said, well, I guess we can't do it ourselves, um, but maybe uh, we should buy somebody that can. Here's so so the, the, the sort of short end on this deal, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, is that what Verizon really wanted was the ad tech that AOL has developed. It's yeah, the first story, the first story said... Right, Matthew. The first story said they wanted uh, the content, they wanted the video, and I, I didn't believe that at all. It's both ad no. tech and ad sales. And Tim Armstrong, yeah. don't forget, built the American sales operation for Google. Uh, Tim knows how to do this uh, extremely well, and, and he bought ad tech companies. Tim, Tim Armstrong, the CEO at AOL. CEO, yeah. CEO of AOL. And he's bought um, a bunch of companies that specialize in ad tech, particularly mobile ad tech, and particularly video. And it feels yeah. like that's what Verizon wants, and the content is just comes along for the ride. So there's speculation, so the and, and let's make it clear it's speculation, that others will buy, Axel Springer has been mentioned a lot, the German publisher would buy the content businesses of AOL, though I, one wonders yeah. why anyone would want them, uh, except for Huffington Post. Well, what's but if the you're distinction a German between company, mobile and, 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 okay, so mobile ad network, I understand, is not content, but isn't video content? But, but okay, but hold on, Leo. What video does AOL really have? So go, go to AOL, Go to the video page and tell me what you lust after there. Well, it's not AOL. It's the brands and gadget. TechCrunch has a video operation. Yeah, that's fine. But 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 is that worth four billion dollars? I mean, no, it's it's and you can you can license that stuff and no, that's that's I don't I don't think they wanted the content at all. HuffPo, HuffPo is too. That's another okay. AOL property. Yes, but but the reports have been that they've wanted to break off for the last year or so, and that this, they may break off now. There's been rumors and denials and so on and so forth. But I think that if they could find anyone to invest in a management buyout or to buy them, they would. Here's, uh, here's AOL's rises. video Let's page. Let's see what we can see. Yeah, just take a look. Watch live. Brittany Snow, Skylar Aston, and Kay Cannon on Pitch Perfect 2. That's obviously an ad. Arnold Schwarzenegger on how California would survive a zombie attack. Um, build is some event, some that they do, right? Um, yeah, who does build? Uh, well, I don't know, because there's Microsoft build. That's obviously not what this is. I don't think... Um, here's what everyone's watching. A week-old story about Sarnev convicted... Week-old? Maybe that's three weeks old in the Boston Marathon bombing. Uh, Breckenridge off-the-grid couple appears in court on criminal charges... If you go to on.aol.com, that's another one. On.aol.com, all right. But it looks like it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, Amtrak video, Sarnia video. It's it's probably much of it from the AP. Um, yeah, this looks like news. Yeah, I don't think Verizon cares about that. No. Do they, no. they what no. you're saying, they, they don't care, care they Adler. don't want this is what they're saying. They care yeah, about no, Adler. they'll sell this off. Okay. Now, yeah. Verizon, on the Fios end, does have some content for, and I'm a Fios customer, for its effort to do a, a, a news channel on Channel 1 to compete with uh, Cablevision's News 12 in my market. Uh, so that matters somewhat to them and the East Coast, but that's that's minor. But, uh, but Yes, but, video matters online, but this is not the video you want. But, uh, you know, Verizon has a deal with the NFL. For instance, if you have a Verizon mm -hmm. phone, you get exclusive mobile access to NFL. Games. Right. Well, well, and the other thing that's happening but none is of Vice. This content. Is, right. Exactly. Yep. Vice is making big deals all around the world, licensing content, licensing a window to telcos. So I could see Vice doing a deal 
Uh, but I, I, this AOL video, and I don't see I, I don't see how Engadget or or HuffPo have things that are sort of proprietary enough, like like the NFL, that they could license it or, or have a an exclusive deal with Verizon that would be worth that much money. Here's some AOL exclusives: Adam Sandler, Million Dollar Noises, Season One, Episode One. So this is like a show. Laugh That's Lessons with Kevin Nealon. Um, and it has ads on it, by the way. Oops, somehow I got out of this on. Whoops. I've never heard of it. Well, of course, these are the two sites. No one I know has ever quoted AOL or Yahoo. <sighs> and yet they supposedly have huge traffic and fire hoses and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, you know what I'm starting uh, to believe now? I just kind of thought, well, content. Well, they've got TechCrunch. They've got Engadget. They've got HuffPo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Verizon doesn't want any of that. No, no, I think those well, will all be trouble. gone. They'll it's be spun off or sold. Well, and and if you're in a gadget, uh, you and you you're limited on what you can review. You can't say a bad thing about Verizon or Verizon phones. That kind of kind of eliminates the fun of it. Um, well, there was well, a piece. Yeah, but he, it was it on the rundown um, where a gadget said they didn't buy us for our editorial. They're not buy, they're not buying editorial. They're not buying our soul and our voice. We will still be independent. Oh, they always well, say that. I, That's what CNET said that. until CBS said you can't that. give Hopper the. The best of CES award because they let you skip commercials. They always that's, say that. That's what the Wall Street Journal said. said when Murdoch thing. bought it. Yeah, yeah. Tim Armstrong yeah. said, you know, the editorial is going to remain. Uh, no one will have anything to say about it, and this is a content deal. I just think a lot of that is just gas. I think what we all want to know is, <laughs> frankly, yes. what did Shingy have to say? And Shingy <laughs> says, "It's." He said it was pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Made his hair stand on end. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool, job. man. So that's, yeah. that's that's what a digital prophet would probably say if you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would just love. I, I would pay money to be in the in the in the meeting, the Verizon at, executive at meeting Verizon, where, yeah. Shing, where Shingy shows up. You figure yeah, Shingy's probably going to be available soon. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Shingy, for those who don't know, is uh, is this guy David Shing? They call him Shingy. He's got quite a style going on, and he's AOL's digital prophet. It's not really clear what he does. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, he redesigned Tim Armstrong's office. But he did it? redesign Tim Armstrong's office. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. As an AOL shareholder, I've always wanted to know how much money goes into Shingy. Oh, and uh, huh? someone wondered whether Mike Arrington would be interested in huh? taking TechCrunch back, and he... Uh, oh. He what? used an F word, I believe, in a response. No, he's got his money, and he's living in the in Pacific yeah. Northwest, and uh -huh. he's very, very happy. He got if he said he got if he said he wanted it back, I, I would send him for psychological uh, <laughs> assessment. Uh, TechCrunch has conferences. Verizon's not going to want that. Um, no, you know Sarah Lane, who worked here, left to go uh, tech do tech video for TechCrunch, mm -hmm. and they do have. Uh, She's doing a daily uh, news show for them. There she is. Um, so, I mean, I could see maybe there'd be some... Verizon doesn't yeah, want Yeah, I could content. see there for business stuff. And and Tim Armstrong said, I'm not selling TechCrunch, but it's not going to be up to him in the long run. Right. I think there's going to be a market for TechCrunch. I think, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal, Fortune, maybe. Yeah, um, uh, not Forbes. Um, Bloomberg, I could see, uh, who Reuters. Yeah. What did you say, Matthew? Like, are you buying TechCrunch or Engadget or both? Yeah. Engadget's valuable. Maybe even HuffPo. Now, so HuffPo, you said, has been trying to get out of the AOL deal anyway, right? <laughs> they also uh, well, do... that's the reports. That's they, the rumors. They, they, they also they, do video. Talk. Didn't they? They do, they do video. They do a live... They do something like Twit, didn't they? Or they, they were going to do... Yeah, Huff, yeah they have HuffPost, HuffPost Live. live. Right now on HuffPost Live, let's just see what's on. Cocktail Chatter be, with Josh Zepps. TV. Think that Scotland, there's no reason. Everyone says, oh, it would be a disaster. Scotland's way too small. How could they possibly survive as a country? Well, isn't That's old news. New has they did a lot of sort of hangout shows, Google yeah. hangout shows, where they would get hosts. Or get yeah, it's kind of like Twit, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. Um, it tries to be more TV. There's a real cameraman there, and there's, yeah. there's teleprompters, and... There's books uh, on the bookshelf. And, <laughs> and, you know, eight-minute segments. I mean, it's it's. I've been on it, and it's very, very pleasant, very nice. But, yeah, it tries to be. It's more like old TV than it is like Twit. Yeah. The, just the Huffington, Post, Huffington Post gets a ton of traffic. I mean, I think it's 
uniques are in the hundreds of millions. Well, but, yeah, but that's not to the video. That's to the stories, right? And that's right. because it's right. kind of like Upworthy. I mean, it, it's all link bait and... And well, I think it's good. No, they're they're hiring more real journalists. And the other thing that's very impressive about about Huffington Post that, uh, you know, as I always say, they laughed when Ariana sat down at the keyboard, but yeah. she, you know, she proved the world wrong. And now the emphasis, and Jimmy Maven, the CEO, the emphasis is on making this a worldwide brand. And I, at the DLD conference, uh, HuffPo was there because they have a deal with Berta, runs a conference, and Ariana had her, I don't know how many it was, twenty one world editors up there. Uh, and they have HuffPost Canada, HuffPost Spain, HuffPost France, HuffPost Germany. Uh, they've they've really done a pretty amazing job of creating native language sites around the world and making HuffPost into a global brand. But if you um, wanted, if you wanted this, wouldn't you buy Vice? Wouldn't that be a better something? They got to be better content. If you wanted place. the video, yes, you'd buy yeah. Vice. Yeah. Uh, but if you wanted. Uh, a hell of a lot of traffic and content. You know, the other report, the other speculation, raw speculation, I don't think it came from anything, but just saying, would it be interesting if somebody said Facebook, given everything going on with Facebook? And, 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 and I don't believe, believe that for a second. I think Facebook and Google cannot own content. It's channel conflict and it's antitrust bait. Um, they just simply can't. Uh, but uh, I could imagine, you know, who, so who would buy... Well, this is the interesting part. A lot of the a lot of the story after this is what of Marissa now. Marissa was going to Armstrong and 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 Meyer were going to merge the two companies. Said many rumors over the years. Um, who knew who would be on top? And how well, this I would come Tim, out? I think Tim wanted that more than more than I think Marissa. so too. But Marissa could take these content properties off. Don't they feel hands. like they're in the same business a little bit? Oh yeah, like Yahoo and AOL seem like they're oh yeah exactly the same the same the same old business same sides yeah of, two sides of the same coin. But you can imagine HuffPo being at Yahoo. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. So maybe that's what'll happen is the content goes to uh, somebody else like Yahoo, and that's, then the that's ad what it network. Feels like to me. Yeah, I can you know? also see the, 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 the that the actual Springer rumor comes from. Um, there are there are country there are there are companies elsewhere, such as in Germany, who would like to enter the U.S. Who believe strongly they can't do it on their own, and they could end up buying something as an entry into the U.S. market. And HuffPost would not be a bad entry vehicle. As a AOL shareholder, are you happy? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I've never been happy because because I got the way this works <laughs> is like I I, I it's um, always been bad. <laughs> but when I when I I. <sighs> I was given when I was a People magazine. I was given a grant of restricted shares, and I'm, this is this just shows you don't ever listen to me about stocks. And so it, it you get the, the shares just are given to you one day. Well, that day when I and you pay taxes on them based on the value you get then. I got them at the extreme highest price it's ever been in history <laughs> in the midst of the Time Warner AOL takeover fight. Nice. I'm sorry, Thanks. Time Warner. So you're just Time holding on Warner, until they come back. Paramount. Paramount takeover price. So I simply thought, oh, it'll get up to 120 again. Back. F me. They're going to come back. <laughs> um, Any day now. <laughs> just wait, just wait, yeah. yeah, so the whole thing's been unraveled since then. So, yeah, I have AOL. I have Time Inc. I have uh, Time Warner Cable, which, nice. you know, now is nowhere with that. Just just because of that, leftovers. I, so, I haven't touched it because it's too painful. Folks, don't I get stock, stock get tips from Jeff Jarvis. Never, is the rule. never, never. Um, of course, uh, Verizon denies that they uh, this is just a uh, ad deal. They say no, we're going to spin off. Maybe we're going to spin off HuffPost, but uh, we're staying in the content business. And I have they Tim, said that out loud. Tim Armstrong says he's staying in the content business and he's not selling TechCrunch. But, he, Tim, but, but, but what about Verizon? Didn't. Oh wait a minute, that's Tim Armstrong. He doesn't get yeah. a say in this, does he? <laughs> For a while, Verizon for six said, months he does. <laughs> Verizon said it was all about ads. Verizon said it was all about ads. Well, they didn't say that in so many words. But the principal the interest, says Verizon's John Stratton, is right. around the ad platform. Sure. 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 <laughs> What's interesting here is, so an ad platform, Verizon and other telco, you know, the, the NFL deal you mentioned, phone companies think in closed, fenced-in universes, right? right? Um Verizon, you know, Verizon for mobile ads on its own stuff. Well, it doesn't have this. This is where the content thing does come in. Serve ads on what, where, and how? Does it become an ad serving mechanism? Uh, you know, you, you, you serve ads on content or on services. Verizon doesn't really have any services, doesn't have any content. Fine, it could have HuffPo, big deal. How much, have, you know, mobile traffic on Verizon phones is there on HuffPo? And, and HuffPo's business, it's in their interest to be on every other platform there is too. 
So yeah, I too accepted this idea. In fact, said this, that I think it's about ads and ad technology, and I believe that in mobile, but but it's it's hard for me to understand Verizon's role in an ecosystem because Verizon never sees itself as an as, as a member of an ecosystem. Verizon always sees itself as its own tower. Well, and of course, uh, Verizon's in what used to be a monopoly and a very strong business that's starting to become less so with Google getting into the wireless business. Uh, I mean, and, wire, and fiber business. And fiber business. That doesn't, you know, Verizon isn't the, the, uh, the, the must win that it used to be. So the funniest part to me is that Verizon can finally uh, maybe serve all those dial-up customers left at AOL. <laughs> Aren't they, how many dial-up customers are still Lots. There? Lots. That's, what, that's, what, that's where their, ca their, their cash yep. free cash flow comes from. A couple million. <laughs> is there a number? Chat room, is there a number? I'm looking. <laughs> that would be a good number for the week. Um, Two point one million. I don't know what this is. Uh, creamy, creamy corn cob. Well, that's a that's an authoritative source if I've ever heard one. Uh, says sorry, creamy. Says two point one mil. What's your source, creamy? Here's one from. Uh, this is from Time Magazine yesterday. Um, two point two million dial-up subscribers. Uh, the company's adjusted operating income from the dial-up, the unit that includes dial-up, is down eight percent year over year for the first quarter. But $126 million. Yeah, that just is, that blows the mind. 2.2, .2, because it's 20 bucks a month. Um, so that means that there are a lot of people who either can't or don't want to pay for higher speed internet. Um, some of those, according to Time, AOL dial-up customers actually aren't paying for the service. They're getting their connection for free after threatening to cancel their subscription. <laughs> 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 Scott Scott Klein had the best line. Uh, he said, "Verizon, another old guy who buys AOL because he wants to connect to the internet." Yeah. <laughs> I heard there were free discs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Wall Street Journal's immediate reaction was, uh, you know, two crumbling empires merging. Although I no longer trust the Wall Street Journal's immediate reaction because you have to wonder, well, what's Rupert, what's what's yep. Rupert's interest in all this? Yep. But I, I actually read a piece, I can't remember who it was now, but their argument was basically looking at Verizon. It says a lot more about Verizon than it actually does about AOL. Yeah. It says Verizon is kind of desperate. You know, this feels like a desperation move. But, 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 go back to uh, what I asked a minute ago, Matthew. How do they use ad, ad technology? How, desperation to, to what end? I'm not, well, I, I just, I'm not sure. Verizon, yeah, that's a problem. Me, it's not like they can like offer it to uh, game developers or something. I don't... Are they I mean, but then again, I go back. Um, they better not put ads on know, my how phone. How did I... Who a guy named... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't forget his name. Ta uh, Estra. Uh, what's his name? Shoot. I mean, what's his name? Um, wonderful man. Who was in charge of the AT&T online service. And he's the guy who... He's the guy who turbocharged... Um, the growth of the net when he took the clock off and <laughs> went to 19, $19.95 a month flat rate. That's what did it. Flat rate. Flat rate. That, that was that. And now was we're going me, back the other crucial way. Crucial moment. Right? Yeah. This is uh, from, uh, this is from uh, Fortune. Good, good publication, I hear. Yeah. Aaron Griffith. Great. Last year, the company earned, company being AOL, Almost a billion dollars from display and search ads on the media properties it owned. It earned almost as much, $856 million, selling ads for third-party sites. That's AOL's fastest-growing segment. It grew 39% between 2013 and 2014. Revenue from in-house media operations during the same period. Display ads fell 3%. Search ads grew just 4%. So, Ver okay, so, so AOL is, is one of those companies that hasn't licked mobile in that respect. Oh. This would help. Does this mean it, it, everybody's enemy is Google? Verizon's enemy is Google. Uh, this is is this Verizon saying, yeah, we know this phone business not, not gonna be so good. Let's get into a new business. Yeah. No, I wonder. That's interesting, isn't it? I can't imagine Verizon saying that. Or can you? If you do honest forecasting and you're in their business, it doesn't look pretty. Well, even Google is diversifying, right? Everybody should be thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, part of the threat is this move towards Wi-Fi everywhere. You know, your Verizon is going to face threats from Comcast Xfinity, which will is essentially positioning itself to be a carrier by putting Wi-Fi everywhere. 
Um, Google Fi. I don't know how big a threat that is because it's based on carriers. Uh, Mainly a threat a threat to pricing models. Right. And even then, it's about the same, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Just a, I, just a little less imprisonment. Yeah. Does does Verizon want tech news? Why would they want tech news? Why would no, they, they want video for that matter? That's, that's it just tight. ties up their network. It doesn't. I, don't I just know. don't think they do. No, and if you look at the entire, uh, AOL doesn't break out HuffPo or any of those assets, but the, the the media unit in their statements, I think last quarter that entire unit had operating income of thirteen million. So that's Huffington Post, TechCrunch, and Gadget. Nothing. All those other sites. God, that's nothing. Million. Jesus, that's Matthew, pathetic. I haven't seen that number. Wow. It's tiny. It's pennies. What What did Gigaom have? You know, geez. I gotta I gotta figure this is actually this. I don't see why this is a good deal for Verizon in any respect. More, I think well, about the ad it. Tech, I think the ad targeting tech is worth something. Whether it's worth four billion or not, I don't know. But I think it is worth what something. What do they to do? Verizon. How do they I, use that? Well, they've got it. So uh, my understanding is, and I, this is not my area, but my understanding is that AOL is good at figuring out how to deliver and when to deliver and to whom to deliver video ads. So that's something that presumably would be worthwhile to Verizon. It knows a lot about you as a phone user. It's got your user ID, your device ID. You know, presumably it's got your location. Um, so it has it has information with which it can target ads or videos. That's my I understanding. Oh, I interviewed Tim sense. Armstrong with Marissa Meyer at CUNY some years ago. And Tim's strategy at the time was to say that all the ad money goes to the top sites, media sites. That's the way the ad business works and still does. And I'm going to make AOL into one of those. And that's mm -hmm. why I'll have a lot of content. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a lot of volume. And the ad business, Lord knows, is still volume-based. My, my rallying cry these days is we've got to shift volume based advertising will commodify towards zero. Um, and that we have to shift to value-based models, starting with attention, but also other, other value-based models. And, and pure volume is just going to be pure cats. And it's not a, you don't make it up in volume. It's not a good business. But that's where AOL was headed. Uh, he, he got more content. Um, uh, meanwhile, he's really good at selling ads, really good at that structure, and brought as much advertising as he could to it. But uh, So then he went more into the pure ad business. <laughs> well, if you're um, going to go into ads, don't do online video ads because Google says only about half of them are ever seen at all. Get yeah, the, than, these are the worst yeah. st statistics viewability, ever. Viewability. Viewability. So th is that means... Gigantic issue in media right now. Uh, an ad is only viewable if ha half or more of its pixels are visible on the screen for at least two seconds. So what it's saying is that of all the video ads being served, half, only half or never, are not even seen for two seconds. Yep. 76% uh, were in a background tab <laughs> and were never on screen at all. 24% were scrolled off screen or abandoned in fewer than two seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, what proportion is is just autoplay video ads where you've got a tab at. open yeah. and it just suddenly loads the ad? And we're we're ripping off advertisers. If an ad a plays place. on a web page and no one sees it, does it exist? <laughs> Yours are does seen any... and heard because they're interstitial. They're interstitial. They're native. Careful with that word, native. I agree, but but they are they are the good kind. They, good they kind are they are true to the form. <laughs> Uh, it's been absolutely uh, uh, corrupted and it's corrupting. And, you know, I don't like it very much. But radio advertising, which is basically what you have, um, has always worked for that reason. It right. fits into the form. Right. Now, by the yeah. way, consider the source. This comes from Google. And uh, you, you should know that they didn't look at YouTube ads because YouTube is a, desti a video destination site. So 91% of those ads are viewed. So what they're really saying is if you want to do video ads, put them on, yeah. our, put them on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Are they viewed though? I mean, does anybody not click skip this ad? I always skip it. Yeah. Sometimes no. I will. I will occasionally get one that either is a compelling enough or b relevant enough. Right. That I will end up watching it. The onus really is on the uh, uh, on the buyer ad buyer. This the because if you make an ad that's compel that well, you have four seconds. If you can make an ad that's – by the way, I guess that's where the four seconds come from that makes it viewed. <laughs> if you make an ad uh, compelling enough that you don't hit skip ad, that's good. Well, it's, it's both, Leo. It's also on the server because it's, it's relevance. Right. 
You know, you show me an ad for a new Tesla. That's true. I'll watch it. Right. Something I want to watch. I will buy it because I'm too poor, right. but I'll watch it. Right. I've never watched a video ad except by accident. Wow. And you know, the truth is, well, Come though, on, haven't you watched a Google ad? Google ads are compelling. You've admitted, mm. Matthew, you've seen them. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Old grumpy uh, puss. Come on. Maybe. Come on. Maybe. But isn't that why Facebook auto plays the video now? And uh, you they know, want, yes, they want you to why. see them. Well, also, but also, I mean, but but for Facebook, it's fascinating to me how much more video I watch because it, oh, what the heck, it's already playing. Oh, that's interesting. And <laughs> and the autoplay, which is so irritating when you go to a site for a different reason, right? The silent autoplay in Facebook, I find to be a very good experience. I are those I ever ads? Are they all, aren't they always content from a? Do they do video ads yet on Facebook? Not yet. I but, don't know that they'll ever do them. But that's what's sure. coming. I don't right? think they auto. I don't think they autoplay. Okay. I mean, I don't mind an autoplay video if it's a cute puppy. Right. But if it's an ad. Ah ah ah! There we go. There we go. Puppy ads. You can sell puppies to Matthew Ingram. That's kind of cool. I just went to my Facebook. Uh, I, Justine, is hosting Price is Right. Price is Right is doing a socially awesome week with social media gurus. And I, Justine, is hosting this week or today or something. I just thought I'd pass that along. I think there's a huge, you know, whether it's autoplay or videos that like the skip ads or people, uh, ads playing in tabs. There's just a vast, vast amount yeah. of wasted money like the old saying used to be you know 50 percent of my ad spend is wasted i just don't know which 50 it's probably 90 <laughs> percent. it's 90 percent, particularly with video nobody knows who the hell is actually watching them i would bet 80 to 90 percent goes unwatched billions of dollars <laughs> not yours obviously <laughs> that's 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 leo leaking money right now <laughs> everybody in media knows that ads the measurement systems, all of this stuff is just made up. And, uh, you know, Neil's. But it's relative BS. And so you buy, and the advertisers know that too, and they buy on relative BS. Right. Well, you know, newspaper ads were BS too, right? Oh, everybody oh, yeah. reads the whole newspaper. But everybody uh, reads every page of every yeah, newspaper. Of course. You right. Know, the, that, those display ads may never get seen. But and I guess. People read every newspaper. That if was it didn't favorite. work for people, they wouldn't do it, though, right? Or is it just they buy, they do it completely on faith? Coca Cola has no idea what would happen if it bought no ads versus buying a lot of ads. I think they, they have hunches. Days. You basically have a hunch. So you run an ad, more people buy Coke. Right. So it must have worked, right? One Otherwise, of the reasons that almost all podcast advertisers are direct response advertisers because right. they can measure it. They 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 exactly. know well, we bought ads. You know, exactly. Casper knows we bought ads on uh, Twig. Um, and they don't pay us for sales. They just pay us for the impressions. Right. But they One know... One way or the other, they're accounting they for the value. They're, they're accounting lot. for the value of it. They say, yeah. well, it cost us whatever, $10,000 in ads, and we got $20,000 worth of mattress sales. Right. They're happy. And they can track a code, you know, that someone uses right. to come from your um, right. site. Like, those things are measurable. It's the stuff that it's brand that advertising. Is so, and and that's right. one of the reasons podcasts don't get brand advertising because they don't have the. You ha it's all done in faith, right? I mean, brand advertising is done on faith, whether it's NBC or Twit, but uh, they they have more faith that NBC that th that Tide ad on NBC is working than they do that the Tide ad on on Twitter. But you got it from Ford. Ford that was brand advertising. You know what I Ford. think our biggest problem really is. Um, it, it's correct me if I'm wrong because I just made this up. But agencies that do the ad buying make money based on the amount of dollars spent. We're too cheap. Right. It's not. It's too much trouble to buy an ad on a podcast or a podcast network because it's such a small buy. They don't make enough money. They're exactly so they're, they're really just stupid. They're just gonna it's go. Oh, I'm gonna. I want to make million dollar buys because I'll make more right. money. Right. And it's no, and it's just cheaper to make the buy. And ad agencies are lazy. And it's it's absolutely stupid. The most ad dollars go to the top. You know, th three or four sites. Efficiency is not well, the there, measure they use. Well, there's the there's there's a, a corollary to the you know no one ever got fired for buying IBM. No one ever got fired for putting an ad in the New York Times right. or buying an ad on some right. CNN.com. Right. So everyone does that, regardless of whether it actually works or not. That's why, in some ways, we're the secret sauce for the companies that do. The Atlantic just had an article that's saying why Squarespace is on every podcast you ever heard. <laughs> And we love Squarespace, and I think I'm pretty sure we were the first podcast they ever bought. 
and it was a huge success. And that's why Squarespace said these work. So the yeah, companies that discover that this more efficient form works um, are uh, kind of have a secret uh, ace in the hole. But the problem is it's not it's never going to be Gray or one of the big media buyers that discovered us. Right. It's going to be either an individual advertiser. Some of our advertisers do their own buys or a small network, in many cases, devoted to new media advertising. How many RFPs do you deal with? Uh, lots. Most so of are, them. Just to explain to the audience that when, when, an, when an agency puts out for a call for proposal and says, this is what we want, hey, come sell yourself to us. A lot of them come from direct, not agencies, but directs. Mm -hmm. But we are, but they're, so uh, we will, d we deal with a number of, they're like agents. Some of them are agencies, some of them are ad brokers or ad buyers, but we deal with them a lot. We turn down more than half out of the box. In fact, it really annoys people when we say no. They go, what, I'm not Why good enough for you? No. <laughs> no, they get insulted. Why do you usually say no? Because not it's not a good fit for our, our network or I don't want, I don't think we should be promoting a product uh, or, you know, we, we, Part of the so value of our advertising stuff. is that we, we, tr we, you know, it's not just random stuff. Yes. <laughs> and that's why it works. That's why it works. But that's it's unheard why. of, and advertisers don't get it. It's unheard of for any media company to turn down money. To turn down, yeah. It's unheard of. When we say, no, but, we, but, don't, we don't want your money, it's like, but, but <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> but it's money. It's, it's money. But see, it would quickly de devolve if I started taking ads for any old damn thing. It would quickly devolve. You would, uh, yeah, right. you, you audience right. members would no longer. It would just be. It would be uh, background noise again, like well, most what, ads. What, what the, whole value, go ahead. the whole value of the ad is you saying, "Yeah, I have yes. used this and thing our selectivity. And I liked it, and it worked. Yeah, and our knowledge of who our audience is and what they might be interested in, and so forth." Well, when so. I saw the heads of, of of Casper and Harry's at at the DLD conference both of in New us. York. Both of them advertise on Twitter, and and you know it, it, it's it's they're they're like oddly in the family celebrities. Yeah, you know uh, yeah. there's a relationship there. It, it it does matter. It does work. Your voice reading these matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we it, that's the thing that's sometimes frustrating is that we do always hear from every one of our advertisers that we work much you know orders of magnitude better than any other ads they buy, but it doesn't mean they Ford is a good example. It doesn't mean that we keep the buy. Yeah. We worked really well for Ford. They did uh, now, of course, Ford because their uh, brand didn't have direct sales numbers, but they did research, and we came out. Uh, I've never, I mean, I saw the research. I've never seen anything like it. But they get tired. They get tired. You, 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 the shiny thing, you know, it's, just it's gets such a little a small dust. Buy. They it's such yeah. a and and Ford does its own in house. Uh, adver they have their own in house agency, so they do the buy. It's still such a small buy is just too much work. It's like ah, what? And they have spent more than a million dollars a year on Twit. But it's like, that's nothing. Because they spend $500 million a year on network ads. Yeah. It's just nothing. So it's, not, it's just not worth the energy. It's very interesting. I find it fascinating. I don't, I'm sorry. This is all about me. Not, let's, enough about me. <laughs> enough about you. Let's talk about our new newsstand. Like Jeff Jarvis says, I, for one, welcome our new newsstand. Uh-oh. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Matthew Ingram says, is Facebook a partner or a competitor for media companies? Yes. We're talking about this new Facebook program. I can't, even though I slathered about it, I can't even friggin' Because it's not see on it. Android. Right. So yes. it's called Instant Articles. Uh, the big, the, some big publishers already in partnership, New York Times, The Guardian, BuzzFeed, National <laughs> Geographic. What happens? What is it? By the way, it's only on the Facebook mobile app. Right. And only on iOS. Okay, well, I got it right here. Let me see. What it, what does it look like? It's just a really well-formatted article. So Facebook <laughs> works its magic on the article. And it's in the news and feed. It's in the feed, and you, re you can read the whole thing in your feed. Videos play automatically. It loads faster. Um, okay. And you don't have to click to go so open in, in app. I was browser. just looking at my desktop, and this so far looks the same. Exactly. There's Gina Trapani's link. Uh, you, there's only a few of them, so the New York Times only put one on. Oh, and I can't guarantee through, I'd see it, right? Right, but if you go to Facebook.com/slash/instant, I think there's there's a list of them. But you can't just look in the Facebook app and and expect to see it. If you follow the New York Times, you'll see it. 
Ah. This is all the New York Times. Well, the New York Times is the first Buzz one on. Theater. The other eight yeah. publishers, uh, it's it's around the world, so it includes The Guardian, BBC, built in Germany, which is owned by Axel Springer, which was the leader of the war against Google. BuzzFeed um, had today. So Buzzfeed. Let, me like, oh. let me like the New yep. York Times. Now, I've liked them. And this is one of them, right? Mar marriage in India, is that one of them? No. I would no. guess no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe if I go back to my home feed now that I like them, will I see it? Uh, here's Trey Ratcliffe. Mm, yeah. By the way, Trey had the same thing happen to him that happened to you, Matthew. What? His bag was stolen from under a train seat. No Ooh, kidding. With lots of expensive cameras yeah, he in He had it? his yeah. entire collection of Sony oh, cameras and Ooh. Leica lenses in there. Ooh. Yeah, it was Ouch. a big loss for him. Yeah, I just had an old laptop and old iPad. Yeah, I so I don't see anything yet. But so now, so <laughs> like the New York Times, like the Guardian, like BuzzFeed, like National Geographic, and maybe if you'll you get... go to uh, instantarticles.fb.com. Okay, on the web. I don't on the no, desktop. That's, that's their. Yeah, well, maybe maybe there that that's that maybe it'll have a link to something to, to get a demo of it. Okay, so tell me what you expect. What it, wrong? It's, a new it's way not look, for publishers it's not look to create that really. fast interactive articles. Well, on the thing Facebook. is, you're not going to click off. That's what's different, right? Right. Quest for a Super B, interactive and immersive. Is there are there ads in there? Autoplay video comes alive as you scroll through the article. So this is that autoplay stuff that we've using existing production tools and standard markup. You could publish any type of article. That's good. It makes it easy for the publisher, right? Um, and and does do you pay Facebook for this or what? Ew. No, they, there's a rev share. Ah, so well, it's not just more than a share. If you sell the ads yourself, you right. keep 100 percent of the you revenue. You get 100 percent. If, if Facebook, Facebook sells, sells the ad, ad you get 70. 70 percent. Ah, okay. And 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 what that means is, on an article per article basis, you're even. Uh, if Facebook sell, if you choose to take the Facebook ad, it's probably because they had a higher value ad, so you're probably up. And you're going to get new distribution, uh, often incremental data. distribution for this, right. so you may be up. So and really. You get data. What you're saying, uh, uh, Jeff, is this is a new medium for publishers to take advantage of. I'm saying that we have no choice but to deal with this. We have to go to where the users are. The idea that we vertically control every piece of a media chain is over, uh, and we have to do this. And we see, I think, a golden opportunity right now between Google and Facebook, where Google, as we discussed last week, is trying to make nice and, and sign friendship packs with with eight publishers. I think Facebook probably went to nine just to say nia nia Google. And uh, but the 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 Google pact is all kind of we'll develop stuff and we'll give you a bribery fund for innovation and we'll do some training and some fellowships and that kind of stuff. Facebook leapfrogs them because it comes out and says, well, actually, we're going to affect your business. We're going to uh, improve the experience for the users so the users will end up seeing more stories because they don't click off on stories because it's an awful experience and it takes forever. Right. When you publish here, you will get new audience. Uh, they will see it in situ. You get your brand, you get your comm score uh, bragging rights, and you kept 100% of the revenue. What's not to love? Well, here's the part I don't love. It doesn't hand over data that enables relationships. You know, my spiel these days is we got to have relationships. we got to give people greater relevance by knowing them as individuals. Facebook will still know our users as individuals, uh, and we still won't. Now, I've talked to people across many technology companies who said, well, okay, Jarvis, but if we gave that data or, or if, if publishers had that data, they wouldn't know what to do with it. True. Stipulated, Your Honor. We're idiots about that. But Facebook and Google could school us in that and help us improve our service and our uh, relevance and our value, which in turn would improve the content we put on these services. And it's a win for both. So this is a, an important first step in my view. Now, the naysayers like <clears throat> Matthew Ingram uh, <laughs> will tell you in a minute that, uh-oh, uh, Facebook is the spider and the fly. And you know, come into my uh, web here, and when, when you're when you're addicted, I'll pull the rug out from underneath you. And yeah, that could happen. We need a lot more discussions about trust, about about the nature of the deal, and especially about Facebook's role now as not just a distributor, but to some degree a gatekeeper and even an editor of the news that people see. But what is There's the negative? Well, what is the negative, Matthew? I mean, it seems to well, me. 
I mean, I, me I see the benefit uh, uh, as a publisher. So, yeah, Jeff says you don't get any information about your viewer. Big deal. You don't know any, that much about who buys your newspaper at the newsstand either. Um, and I get a, I get eyeballs. I get people sharing my content. I get some excitement around my content. It's right, done right. in a form that's easy for me to do. So what is the best? And it doesn't cost me anything, right? I don't have to... I don't have to pay Facebook for this privilege. So there's two. So there's two aspects. And uh, when it comes to the negative aspects of Facebook controlling the news feed and when a news feed, this is not a theoretical thing. We have examples of when this has occurred. Zynga is one example. Hitched its wagon to Facebook, got destroyed effectively right. because they changed the algorithm. That's billions of dollars. Not only that, we have an example from the media industry. The Guardian, the Washington Post created social reading apps. Facebook promoted right. them so that people could read well, their articles. Okay, inside but hold Facebook. on, Matthew. Just wait. Just wait. I'll come back. So I'll Facebook, come back to that one. All right, we'll put so that on the checklist. Facebook promoted okay. those heavily, right? And it was great. They got lots of readers. They got lots of people subscribing and downloading these apps or sharing them or whatever. And then Facebook changed the newsfeed algorithm. Those things were hidden more, and those readers disappeared. So, and Facebook said, you know, sorry, we changed the algorithm, you know, for other reasons. That's so the risk. This is what I said in the thing I wrote for Fortune about it. It's not that Facebook is, uh, is an this, evil. This, oh crap! Okay. It's this it's was that, my trick so that, I could say what I want to say. It's <laughs> that they're going to do it accidentally. They're going to make decisions that benefit right. Facebook, and those decisions are going to impact these publishers who are getting 70, 80 percent of their traffic from Facebook. And well, what's one what, should what not rely on Facebook, that? obviously. But if you're The New York Times, well, that it's was just Matthew's one point of... on Twitter the other day. Um, but I'm not sure that you can really move those dials as easily as you want. And if suddenly you get a flood of Facebook traffic, what are you going to say? No. Yes, you need to diversify. No, elsewhere. But Facebook is diversification. It's diversification from the old model that. of making people come to you. This is why it is the, 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 the actually the spider and the fly is not the best analogy, but this is why it's like the scorpion and the frog. Frog has to get across the river. <laughs> right? Oh, right? picky, 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 Matthew. Carry the, carry the scorpion. <laughs> scorpion stings the frog. Why? Well, it's in my nature. Right. Facebook is going to do what benefits Facebook. Of course. Well, now, okay, Facebook, now, now let me answer your point. Now let me answer that point that you just made about the earlier Guardian Washington Post thing. And, and, and I had similar concerns. And I talked to people at Facebook about this. And their point was that it was a really awful consumer experience. And I remember that. There were two problems with that, with that app at the time. Number one, um, if you read our, if you were a Washington Post user and you read articles without you knowing or asking what you read was shared uh, across your friends. Stupid, wrong by Facebook, uh, but that was one. So people were irritated by that. The second thing they were irritated by was they were getting spammed by these publications. There was too much stuff in the feed. Papers were putting too much in. Facebook had too little control over it. It was a bad user experience. And I think we can all agree right. about that. It was. Right. It was, no, I it was, would it totally good agree. for publishers. So it wasn't but just they, that one day Facebook just said, oh, we don't like this. Now we'll turn this down. They said, you know what? We tried this, as Facebook often does, and said, this didn't work. But then over time, they came back. They have an experience that I think, if I could only see it on my phone, um, in theory, it's a least, great experience. It's a great a experience. experience. And that is not, but that's, that's actually part of my point. So Facebook is going to make decisions based on what it wants for its users. And some of those decisions What's may benefit the New York Times. And nothing is wrong with that. Some of those decisions What's may benefit the New York that? Times and some won't. Some here's, won't. Here's the what risk. If, Let me if, propose what this. What if Facebook decides it doesn't want to show you news articles about Syria because it's depressing? Right. That's and it won't show you news articles question. about Syria. That's a different but that question. happens all the time, happen Jeff. It happens all the time. Plus, yeah, so well, all right, but Facebook here's the has not here's shown Facebook's that it cares at all about journalism. The well, New York well, Times presumably cares about they, journalism. Who said they must? No, but yeah. here's the risk. If you, as a major media enterprise, start doing this and you build Facebook, you're just giving Facebook more and more power. Exactly. You're, in, so a, in effect, undermining other, your future because exactly. if you're, you're moving bold, everybody exactly. to this Facebook platform. No, but, but Leo, you're presuming. You're, you, well, Leo, you're you're a bloody fool to put your stuff on, on, on YouTube then. then. Then don't do I it. Am. I would, I am. I am. If in no, and by, in a, uh, but you have not. to, right? Yeah. Well, you we put it there. It's not. The we don't. It's a very small. Have to use Facebook. It's a very small part of our uh, revenue, because the way YouTube works doesn't really impact us, and never would, even if YouTube yes, became the dominant. But I think there is a very real risk here that Facebook becomes is already, in fact, 
the source of news for yes. large quantities That's of what people. So me. let's talk about Facebook that in two becomes, ways. Facebook becomes the place where people get their news. They stop paying attention to who it comes from. Right. How does that benefit news brands that have hitched their wagon to Facebook? Well, but, but Matthew, you're also presuming, getting you're also presuming that people are going to still say, I want to come to the news brand. That idea of having a website and making people come to you, we know from Facebook traffic is zilch. How do people discover our stuff? Because they're recommended. Where is it recommended? From Facebook. We are already there. Whether you see it on Facebook or see it on our site, it's coming from Facebook, not because it's coming from Facebook, because it comes from people. Now, the points okay. you raise that I absolutely agree with, I'm going to agree with you now. I'm going to agree with you now. So give me a chance. Please do. Uh, the point where I'm going to agree with you, and, and this was an issue in Perugia, uh, and, and I discussed this on the show afterwards. Andy Mitchell from Facebook gave a talk and got asked by George Brock of City University in New York. Of, no, I'm sorry, the other City University, the one in London, the, the, the second one. Um, George said to him, you, you, you've got to acknowledge your responsibility for exactly what Matthew's talking about, that you're a gatekeeper now to news. And you've got to deal with that. And Facebook gave the Facebook corporate answer, which is, well, we don't really control what you see. The algorithm choice. doesn't control right. it. The users, it's what the users see. Now, there is some truth to that. And that's what they tried to argue with that, with that study me, that came out, that came out me, with the filter let me, bubble let me, let me, I'm still, let me get, to finish agreeing with you. Okay, um, please continue agreeing with me. <laughs> there's some truth to that in the sense of uh, when Eli Perizer and the filter bubble complained, uh, the truth was Facebook said, we don't show you any conservatives, Eli, because you never look at them. And so he he bears a responsibility. We bear a responsibility. If I never look at Syria stories, Facebook is not wrong to presume I don't want Syria. I'm not a Facebook is not a newspaper. It is a it, they're, they say straight out our first goal is to connect friends and family, and then news came along for the ride. No one should depend upon Facebook solely for their news. Um, and, and I think we have to look at it a different way, Matthew. I think we have to look at it and say that this is bonus for us. The question is once this is why I push for the data. If I could make myself more relevant to you more often and get more engagement, and if I could get you to then, yes, come to my site and have a relationship with me or subscribe to my newsletter or do whatever, then I have benefit. But I think that, that where we'd also agree is you can't just ignore this. In the, in the, no, in the German magazine not. Focus, uh, all right, I'll finish one second. The writer said that, that, that this was, a, and you used the word too, a, a Faustian deal. And, and the problem with that is that acts as if, Facebook or Google is just going to corrupt us. The, the, the focus writer was talking about the Google deal. You were talking about the Facebook deal. Well, it's not the people who are there we're reaching don't corrupt us. We don't have much choice but to figure out good ways to deal with this new business model. And so to me, the art of this is negotiation. What are the good business terms, not the emotional, I don't like this terms. So now I've, and, I'll shut up. And I totally agree that... That news organizations should use whatever means they can to reach readers. And that includes Facebook and it includes Snapchat and it includes Instagram. I would like to see a bit more of that kind of thing than, than tying your business model to Facebook. Because all the terms that matter are Facebook's to control. All of them. When people see your content, how people see your content... Who sees right, so your let's content, negotiate how that. much they charge for the ads, so, how much percentage they give you. Sure, they'll give you 70% now. What about a year from now? What Matthew, about two years Matthew, from now? These are, this, I went to the same discussion with my students in class where they said, I don't like Facebook. I don't want to deal with Facebook. And I said, you, you, you can end up walking away. It. Yeah, you can end up walking away from the negotiation table. But the right way to have this discussion is, what terms do you want? Yeah. What does Facebook have that you want? What do you have that they want? What would be mutually beneficial? And forget the fear factor, build that into the business. Sometimes scorpions and frogs have to things. take boats together. Right. <laughs> so, and so I Matthew, you know, the would, newspapers have deal, to get across the, the river. What's the deal you would like? Scorpion and frog well, don't they? And aren't they, aren't, aren't, they, the aren't they struggling? Aren't me, traditional media outlets sure struggling? They are. Sure Especially they are. Yeah, to reach think, the younger audience that, that new media is... But it feels to me, it feels to me like lots of publications, and I'm not naming anyone here, are, are fixing the entire... They're hoping that Facebook right. is kind of the, the holy grail. Like, it is going to solve their problems. Just problem. like paywalls, tablets, and right. native tablets. advertising. Plenty of holy grails out there. All of them suck. But so not that they shouldn't do it or work right. with Facebook, but I think you've got to be very, very clear-eyed okay. about what Facebook Stipulated, wants Your Honor. versus what tell you me want. What, tell me what are the business terms you would consider good. That's the and way Facebook to have this discussion. Is, and Facebook what, is no, not no, interested. What do you want? 
Well, I don't, I don't think it matters. Gonna, I think we'll you that. brought the right. You, the analogy is excellent that you, that you brought up, Jeff, of YouTube. Because if you are uh, relying on YouTube for your content business, which I'm not, but if you were, that would be very risky. And the power of YouTube is such that you don't really have any negotiation power with YouTube. Right, but he, but here's my point. You do have. This goes back to the beginning. There is a small, slight window right now caused by the German publishers I've complained about, let's give them credit, that Facebook and Google want friends in publishing, in part because they fear government coming after them, in part because they're sick of, the, of, the, of, of this war, um, there is, a, and because they're leapfrogging each other. So Google tried to be nice, Facebook is nicer. Now what can Google do? There is a negotiation position here. So I would argue very, very strongly that the thing to do now is to sit down and say with no emotion, None of this, oh, I don't like them, I don't trust them, what are they going to do? It's a matter of negotiation. If you deal in the cable business, you can bet whoever you're dealing with is going to try to screw you every way to Sunday and then sell your corpse. And yet you deal with people in that industry. No, fine. These people are nicer than cable by far, nicer than Verizon by far. We have to be able to figure out how to deal with them. So the answer I would ask you is the same one I ask my students. Without any of that, tell me what's a good deal with Facebook. But it, but to me, it's more than that. To me, it's more I, than that. The you cannot deal with the Facebook algorithm. There is no deal that you can No, cut you can. Yes, you can. You can. Yes, say, you can. No, you, you can ask for some you assurances. Can. Facebook controls that algorithm, and they will you not promise you assurances. anything. The they New York will not Times not promise say, you anything. So wait, Facebook wait, is saying... Wait, Matthew, wait, wait. Facebook is saying we won't saying, promote... Uh, Facebook is saying I, we, won't, imagine, we won't... Imagine you sat down with Mark, and you got him drunk, and Mark said, okay, Matthew, what do you want? What are you going to say? But Mark, I know you're never going to give me anything. But Jeff, that's... I understand what you're saying. Why don't you tell me... Tell me why you keep taking down uh, pages and stories about the <laughs> yeah. Syrian civil war. Tell me why. Tell me why yeah. you take down pictures and, and videos. Me, about there's no, that, that, there's no incentive for Facebook why to should, do that. There's no window. Why should, why should, why should wait, we wait, trust wait. you with yeah. our Let me content? Put it as a business term. Let me put it as a business term. The business term would be that if you're the New York Times, you say, listen, I'm a valued brand, and if I walk away from you, that's not going to look good. So I want you to assure me that n times a day, if I say something's important to someone who subscribed to me, we will agree to a number that you will say that I will serve that to my readers because I believe that's important. And, 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 and that is a business term. It's not about playing with the algorithm. It's a business term that you can negotiate. If you so, can. If we don't go to the table with any business terms, we will never get anything. Well, one by one. Hold on, I we're think, gonna, uh, hold I on think Jeff. having let, those let, terms let, would be great. Yeah, if you could get Facebook to do it. We don't know what the terms are. We don't know if we don't try. We don't know if, well, we don't know what the I terms are that the New York Times and the National Geographic got. But I think so you're giving a lot more credit to the value of the New York Times and National Geographic to Facebook than probably Facebook does. I don't, I don't know. Well, I think, I, well, listen, we're not going to put Facebook, our entire... New York Times Facebook is not gonna will do what it wants with the algorithm. I that, agree. That is I, the I end think you're right, Matt. Yes. Facebook will do whatever is required. And if New York Times stories about important news topics don't get clicked on, they will be hidden in the news feed, period. Yeah. And I don't think... And, it, you and, can negotiate and, all you want, but it... Well, and maybe the New York Times shouldn't be... Maybe that's the wrong thing to negotiate for, by the way. If I were the New York Times, I wouldn't negotiate for saying show serious stories. What I would negotiate for is saying that this is a chance to have a relationship with an individual and give them greater relevance, but I can't do that, Facebook, if you don't give me data. Yeah. And then I'll... Then I'll now, 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 can that be corrupting? To, I'll, give them, I'll give you nothing but cats? Sure, it could. But that's where I trust the New York Times is not going to do that because it will hurt their brand. So there is a negotiation that occurs that says... That I will give your, I will give readers their greater relevance and value. What I want back is the assurance from Facebook that there's some long term on this. Number one, number two, uh, after getting the data that that we have mutual agreement of how to do it and how to do it well in privacy. And number three, um, that you will not censor me, Facebook, according to your supposed community standards, as we saw in Perugia, Berlinska. They're never going to agree to that. Well, I get Matthew. Matthew, you don't know until you try to negotiate. So what you're saying then in the end is then don't even try. And then why why go on to Facebook? What you're really saying is we don't trust them, so don't go there. And I'm saying that we have to go there. And if you have to go there, you try to go there in a way you try to negotiate something. We have a small winner to negotiate. Not negotiating is irresponsible. Okay. It's okay, we got your point, Jeff. Matthew, ah, I'm going to give right. you a chance to say a final word. Well, I think I'm not saying you should not put your stuff on Facebook. And I'm not even saying that the New York Times shouldn't experiment with instant articles. I think, I think what should not happen is you shouldn't expect that Facebook has any interest in you or your journalism or your business model 
or whether you live or die. You are just content. And so if your content works for them, then it, then they're happy to keep you on board. I think the risk is that the central factor that determines your success is it's out of your control, and that is the algorithm. Facebook is the one that controls that. They move the levers. You have zero control over that and always will. And right. I think that's a big risk. Let me ask a question. No, no, why, we're not going to talk Facebook anymore about this. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask one last question. All right. Why is Facebook doing that? Leo, you can just, if you need to... I just, I, I think we, like, I think we've heard both sides. All right, all right, all right. right. Uh, no, I was asking a legitimate question. I was, why? I, I'm curious. Why Matthew thinks Facebook is doing this at all? What's the benefit to them? I think there's a PR benefit that you mentioned. I think they want to be seen to be partnering with people and not crushing people under their boot heel. And I think they, they believe that some of that content users will engage with it. it, it it's very simple to me. Facebook would love to own news. Period. Right. How do you get to own news? Well, the first thing you do is you get the major existing incumbents to give you their content. Then, as you win viewers over, you can slowly push them out of the market, and you got news. Is news I something anybody wants to own? Well, Facebook does. <laughs> they no, Facebook wants attention, right? What they want is your attention. It's attention. They it's want you to live in Facebook. And so to the degree that its users want a variety of content in there they're going to do everything all the content deals they can to get content in there they're going to make it look very sweet but the and you can maybe make a great deal right now maybe maybe you can negotiate a great and it deal used right to now be, it used to be that what people users wanted was zynga games right and then they didn't then when they didn't now yep. zynga's mistake yep. was facebook was their only platform right so that's an obvious foolish mistake and it's a foolish mistake with youtube too nevertheless i think that the risk here is uh is that facebook I mean, it's clear what Facebook wants. They want you to live in Facebook, period. You know, it's interesting to get back to Google. Um, what, it would be interesting to me, what if Google tried to do something similar? What if Google said, you know, we'll host your articles and we'll, we'll show them full length and we'll give you a share of the ad revenue? I'd be interested to see what the reaction would be. What, what, what do you, what, no, I'm, curious, I'm curious your reaction. What would you think about that? I think it would be better to have two places doing that than... Google, that's what Google, I'm saying. That's Google, 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 though, does, doesn't Google just... Google's business model is different. Facebook wants you to live within Facebook. Google wants you to live within the right. Internet. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the opportunity. I think what, what, I, what I will say in a post tomorrow is what I think the, the way that le Google can leapfrog here is by saying that, if that neat Facebook thing they gave you, that's wonderful. We're going to enable you to do that anywhere on right. the net. I also should point out that uh, if you're Mark Zuckerberg, you're living in paranoiac fear at all times... That at some point, your user base, billion and a half strong or whatever it is, might tire of you. Yes. And um, there isn't really much stickiness to Facebook. At this point, the only stickiness to Facebook is, is the network effects, where your family and friends are. Right. Um, now, if it was the only place you could get news, maybe it would be more. Isn't, isn't Mark's goal at this point to increase stickiness? For sure. That's all. That's yeah. what he needs to do. That's the, yeah. Because he, if, you're, if, if he's going to survive, he has to make it very... Uh, unpleasant for you to switch to some other network. But that's all your friends and family, the, the switching cost. Yeah. Content's not a switching cost. Well, that's an interesting point then. Shouldn't he be doing everything he can to make sure that <laughs> your friends and family stick around? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't go to bed at night content in the success that is Facebook. I'm sure that every day oh, no. he's worried, and he should be. Because the inter ultimately, the Internet is, is, is a pretty frictionless environment. How are um, each of you feeling about Facebook these days? I hate it. He should be you worried about any trust, too. Yeah. Well, he's got a lot of I worries. I mean, Google's being... You know, that's, yeah, the, that's I, the sad thing. It's the same thing with Google. The, you get really successful in this country. It's hard to hold on. It's better to be slightly successful. Like me. But it's interesting that Facebook <laughs> is doing lots of stuff that's... <laughs> Don't stick your head up. Just stay in your gopher hole. Facebook is doing lots of stuff that's just as likely to draw I agree. antitrust attention I agree. as Google, if not more. I agree. But that's why it's very interesting that they got a deal with Axel Springer through Built. Mm -hmm. while it's Google's, a daring game. And, it's a very and Mark daring Zuckerberg game. didn't get where he is without walking that edge. That oh, edge. yeah. Uh, and I think that that's smart and uh, fascinating. And ultimately, Mark's got all the money he'll ever need for, you know, for many, many, many lifetimes. So it ain't about that anymore. No, never has been. Yeah. But I'll be interested to see if this venture, Instant Articles, lasts any longer than 
the social readers that yeah. Washington Post and Guardian came up with. Boy, if you if you look at Facebook and and all of its initiatives over the last three years, how many have stuck around? Very few. Yeah, lots are gone. Lots of failures. Lots, lots they of poured abandonments. Tons of money into. Yeah, we Who talk all the time too. We talk all the time about the things Google's abandoned. Facebook abandoned stuff right and left. Oh yeah, yeah. constantly. So, in fact, all of this may be a tempest in a teapot because in three months, instant <laughs> articles might just be. Oh yeah, what's next? That's definitely possible. Mark clearly the users have... don't like it. Right. Right. It will. Well, and that's exactly what Matt's saying. Right. <laughs> well, that, but that, that's uh, a as, a, as a content the creator, users... you have no say in really the. Well, but no, zero. That's, they're, 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 that's that's a slight difference and nuance there. If Facebook says, uh, uh, but fa Facebook always tries to make the best. Facebook and Google both try to make the best user experience. Right. The Washington Post Guardian thing was not a good user experience. If this is a good user experience, Facebook will stick by it. If it's a bad user experience, no matter how good it is for publishers, it won't matter. So users will, are paramount in this. And I will say that that the reason why Facebook is in a position to do this and why it's such an appealing job, lots of news companies have done a terrible job of producing, you know, usable mobile mm -hmm. apps, mm -hmm. um, a good user experience. Um, so Facebook, you know, by comparison, looks fantastic. All right, we're going to take a break. I think this is a good conversation, and I'm glad we actually extended so, it a little bit. Sorry, that I, I, I thought it was fun. I think it's fascinating. It is. I think it's fascinating, and uh, and it's what we well, talk I'm about. I'm glad Matthew and I are on at the same time because I knew we would see this from different perspectives. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Let's talk mattresses. <laughs> let's let's lie down in peace. Let's lie down in peace with Casper. You spend so much of your time lying on a mattress, and yet how much time did you spend buying that mattress? <laughs> Maybe five, ten minutes in a mattress store? I know, because I did it recently. Casper's so much better. This, in, a, in a way, this is a, a, an interesting... They made it a necessity, a, a virtue out of a necessity. If you're going to sell mattresses on the Internet, well, you know, people are going to naturally say, well, I, how do I know if I like it? So what Casper says is you have 100 days to decide, or 100 nights, I guess. You don't have to lie down in a showroom. It has nothing to do with whether that mattress is going to work for you. I want you to order a Casper mattress right now. You could buy it online. It's easy to buy. It comes in a box, which is awesome. Makes it very easy to get even a king-size mattress into a little tiny space. We got a, a king-size for my son who lives on the third floor, uh, and he loves it. Loves it. We'll probably have to get him another one. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it out of his room. <laughs> so we might have, he's moving this next next semester. Uh, latex and memory foam come together to give you both the firmness you want and the sink and bounce you need. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. Here's, a, here's an elderly man jumping on that mattress. And, man, does he like it. He loves it. You can, And the beauty of this is if you don't like it, you have 100 days to decide. They'll take it back. No cost to you. I love Casper. You're going to love it, too. An online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost made in the U.S. of A. $500 for a twin, $950 for a king size. Compare that to the premium mattress in your mattress, st in your mattress store. You'll see it's a good deal. And we're going to give you $50 off because you're listening to the show at Casper.com slash twig. C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash twig. I love my Casper. You will, too. That's an example of it. Sometimes people think we should only do tech ads. And I guess in inter internet companies, you know, kind of disintermediating the traditional uh, brick and mortar store. That's a tech company in a way. But um, I just do stuff I like. <laughs> Frankly, got products I like. The National, uh, the House of Representatives has passed the USA Freedom Act today, minutes ago. Oh, 338 to 88. Uh -oh. It will head to the Senate where, uh, of course, uh, Mitch McConnell hates it. Because he hates freedom. So uh, it may not pass the Senate, but it has passed the House. This, of course, is the bill that would back up the recent court decision uh, about bulk collection of telephone records. The USA Freedom Act would limit the bulk collection of telephone records and allow companies to challenge gag orders imposed by national security letters. This was the other uh, side of that coin was uh, if you got a national security letter, you weren't allowed to tell anybody that uh, the data was being collected. The bill replaces bulk collection with a system that requires actual court orders to search data on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Gosh, a constitutional law. Holy Maybe. cow. Are these guys nuts? Great idea. Uh, it's probably one of those uh, needs a supermajority in the Senate, which is, of course, going to be impossible. In fact, uh, in November, they voted on this uh, similar USA Freedom Act that it got 58 votes in the Senate, which is too short of the supermajority needed. Uh, open letter to the Senate urging them to pass the USA Freedom Act last year from Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Twitter. Of course, these are all the companies who get those national security letters and can't tell you. So we'll watch with interest. Right? This is time to write your Congress critter. Write your senator. Especially if you're in Kentucky. Write to Mitch McConnell and say, you know what? We want this. We want this bill to pass. We expect it to pass. We got this thing called the Fourth Amendment. Ever hear of it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I got on my high horse. But I thought everybody else was on a horse. I should ride along with you. Um, giddy up. Giddy up. Giddy up. So I got I I forgot to I've been wearing the Apple Watch I I yeah uh, maybe I've maybe I I don't know maybe I've defected I don't know. You like it? Uh, you know they're all the same really. Uh, the Apple Watch is a little prettier. I mm. I made the mistake of buying the LG Urbane. It looked good on the page, and then I put it on. And everybody said, "What is that ugly watch? Did you get that under a bridge? Where'd you get that?" Somebody's selling it out of his trunk of his car. It doesn't look so bad. This is no, but this is the Apple Watch. Of course, it doesn't look <laughs> oh. bad. It's seven hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, that was seven hundred. It's stainless steel with a Milanese loop, 700 schmackaroos. But they're all about the same. I mean, really, seriously, they do, they all do about the same thing. Do you look at your phone less? Uh, no, because a lot of the stuff you want to do is easier on your phone, even though you could mm. do it on the watch. It's such a teensy weeny. It's like on a postage stamp. I look less. When, when, when an alert comes yeah. in and I, I can look at the, I say, oh, I don't need that. And Actually, I, I, you know, I prefer yeah. Android, and I, and I really like Android Wear. Um... <laughs> Especially the new Android Wear on the Urbane. I really, really like it. Um, but this watch is less uh, offensive. <laughs> so, I don't know. Do you have a watch, Matthew? This kind of watch? Uh, no, I have a Timex Iron Man that was there you go. I think, at Walmart. He is an Iron Man. <laughs> Google has a uh, Apple Watch app, you know, Google News and Weather. Google rejects 70% mm -hmm. of the quarter of a million uh, right-to-be-forgotten requests. 70%. I can't if, that's, if that's a different number from what we've heard in the past. It didn't seem like it was that. It was a majority in the past. I thought in the past. Yeah, that's a lot. It was a... Um, I don't you know, know. It might have been. Really? Anyway, that's good news. Yeah. Um, they've received 253,617 requests. About 500 a day now, down from the original 1,500 a day. Um, I don't know if they'll be compelled to say yes. Oh, initially Google was refusing just 43%. Hmm. Ah, okay, there you go. So, uh, and uh, according to uh, the article in the, I, in the esteemed IBT, <laughs> <laughs> uh, IBT owns Newsweek. International Business Times yep. owns Newsweek. Yep. Both of them have become rags. Yep. <sighs> Did Newsweek ever retract the story about Bitcoin being created by a, a uh, nope. guy nope. in Southern California? I don't believe so. They Covers just waited, to, waited for people to forget. Forget. Oh, man. That was one of the worst cover stories in recent memory. It was their relaunch of their paper ver version. And yeah. And it was wrong, it was wrong, wrong. Story. It was a great story. It was a great story. I, I wanted to it was, believe it. It was really well written. But it was it, fascinating. It fell apart. It was just totally wrong. They didn't hire Columbia University to check their veracity as a, like a Rolling <laughs> Stone did. Hey, mm. uh, so speaking of which, uh, Brian we'll Williams. Too, so. Oh, what's the latest? Oh, is he done? I thought he was. Did, is that oh. not true? It's get it's every you know if he, if I were Brian Someone I would say that? yeah yeah I'm gone don't stop I investigating. Yeah, got to go. <laughs> the more, um, They're going through his junior high school transcripts now. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just getting worse and worse. No, I guess there's no uh, there's no final. I just it. listened to Brokaw on Fresh Air on, on, yeah. on NPR, and I was pretty shocked that Terry Gross didn't ask him. Brokaw's now saying, I have nothing more to say, but at least ask him so you can hear him so, say, so I don't want to talk about that. Fox News asked him. Ask him. Fox no? News asked him. And Fox, oh. he told Fox News, 
He said, uh, Brian's at the point where he is, I gather, trying to decide how he's going to respond. <laughs> right. A little late for that. Uh, and now, after the probe, they, they, they it was originally just two or three allegations. Now there's ten. Yeah. So, I always liked Brian. Nice guy. Told a great uh, story. He was a good... <laughs> And you know, well, really, you know, isn't that what a news isn't that what a news anchor's job is? Is to tell, isn't that our job? Tell me, professor of journalism at City University of New York, Jeff Jarvis, isn't journalism the job of telling a story? Look, you cannot reproduce the truth, but you it should can, be true, should it not? Well, it shouldn't be a it shouldn't be a lie, but it, there's truth and there's truthiness. Is isn't the job our job? Everybody is to make sense of. A uh, random set of almost seemingly random set of facts by telling a story around it that's compelling and kind of makes it make sense and it helps us understand it because the story is how humans understand things. And sometimes a, a cleverly uh, uh, added, crafted non fact will help the overall factualness. <laughs> no? I well, don't think we are, as storytellers. You don't? No. I think that, that that's that, that's what the form we took. If we truly look at how we serve communities with information, um, I think we're more than that. Stories are one of the tools we'll have. But 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 Brian Williams is special. When I, when I listened to this Brokaw thing on Fresh Air, um, and, and you're right, Matthew, maybe it was cut down because it was Pledge Week, so maybe there was a longer oh, version. Jesus. But the version I, oh, the version I heard heard nothing. But but the... And Brokaw's, you know, a good guy, but but the ego inherent in what he said as an anchor, he talked about 9-11, and it was he, he debated about what what should he prepare? He should prepare the nation for this or that. <laughs> the hubris that's, that of is the hubris. Anchor. Oh, amazing! That is hubris. But and reporters, that's, that's the problem but, let, but let me get let, this is what I hear in my mind: a reporter's job is to gather facts and deliver them. Period. Right. Uh, yeah. not and explain things. Uh, less so explain Find experts. Less so explain things. More just to gather facts. I mean, obviously, there in the reporter's mind, there has to be some sort of overarching story. But really, it's to gather and deliver facts. Uh, but an anchor maybe is like a meta reporter, whose job it is to interpret the facts and tell a story so the American people can understand. No, it's to read. It's to uh, read a teleprompter. Right. <laughs> and I think you could argue that Brian Williams. In fact, I have argued that Brian Williams and the entire concept of a celebrity anchor right. who sits there and kind of interprets the news is an antiquated like that worked in the 40s and 50s yeah didn't walter like cronkite Canada, though, Matthew. didn't walter That's cronkite efficient. after after going to vietnam and assessing the story end up saying we this is a war we cannot win and changed overnight america's opinion of vietnam and, and lbj he certainly helped change but i think a guy like brian williams like he's you know a pleasant voice and he, yeah. he, he, he he's a provides. He's a talking head. Right. He's, a, he's a hairdo. Yeah. yeah he's a hairdo I mean, with a mouth. To some extent, I thought it was odd that people were expecting him to somehow be a journalist. Like, I, that was not my expectation at all. What's it so like the in Canada these days, was, Matthew? What do you mean? Uh, in terms of the, ad, the you know, the anchors on the national, the, the, the national view of anchors, what's it like? Is it the well, same as the like, U.S.? We like Peter Mansbridge because he's been around for 100 years and, and he refused to go to the U.S. and stayed in Canada is, instead. Is, and, he's, is he like the nightly news anchor on the CBC or something? Or Yeah, he's kind of the, yeah. the eminent screes of anchors. Yeah. But, I mean, that whole position to me is kind of farcical in a way. Yes, like, it just course. makes no sense to have to have this one guy or, or even woman who sits there and kind of interprets the news. You know, I can do that. And just, I don't think Walter Cronkite stuff. would have made up a story to underscore his opinion that Vietnam was unwinnable, right? I doubt it. I don't. He doesn't seem like that would have happened. And had it happened, yeah. it would have been just as scandalous then as it would be now. But I think Brian, it was it was all about the delivery and the story and yeah. the feeling and conveying the emotion, and so it didn't really matter what the specific details were. You know, he and misread. So could, I think he misread the American public. He thought that was his job. I bet yeah, he, he may have. If he, he speaks may. out on this, that's probably what he should say, which is, I'm sorry, I thought I was supposed to do that. <laughs> really? That's what I'd say. <laughs> I'm betting he's not going to say that. Um, I don't know his... I PR misunderstood. I, I thought I saw in the memo that I was supposed to make up facts to, to substantiate my opinion. Was that not... 
So, so here's the here's the poignant part, though. I mean, Brian Williams. He said he thought he was a nice guy. He's I love he's, Brian. he's I met destroyed. Him. I think he's great. I've worked with he's him. He's destroyed. Oh, what, what, well. What, how? What's what's your? He's got plenty of money in the he's bank. Got plenty of money. He was he but his he life could be the was host to be. of all sorts of things. He could be the host America's of America's funniest got, home videos is looking. Very, I think he's well liked. Yeah, he, he just should can't so, host anything. Journalist. Should be a, nobody anymore. ever says, "Hey, Carson Daly, you made that up." Right. Who nobody cares? ever. Nobody ever says. You know, uh, how come, uh, how come, uh, I mean, it's, it, yes, he could be a TV host, which is really what he was, and he just didn't understand. Right, exactly. He didn't understand. He'll it write was a, a reality book. show. He was, it's a reality he show. He was the host of a reality yeah. show. Yeah, he misunderstood, I think. So, you seriously think that he could be, he could get hired for a show? Good I Lord, so. Don Imus got yeah. rehired. <laughs> Marv Albert got rehired. Yeah, exactly. Sure. We're, America we loves to show. forgive the sinner. Just not the news. He could have a talk show in yeah. a second. But you ten dollars, he's talking to five different oh, yeah. people. He could do the tomorrow show. You're right. <laughs> what is this story in the Wall Street Journal? How Google's top minds decide what to forget. That's the right to be forgotten. Ah, it's more right to be forgotten. So yeah. who is on this panel? Not personally. They don't decide what to personally forget. <laughs> That's what I thought. Never mind. I was all excited about the headline. Larry that Page and Elon part. Musk meeting in uh, what? Yeah, secret, apartment. secret apartment. Secret apartment. Secret <laughs> apartment. That's fascinating. On the moon. That's um, what we picture happening, right? We picture them meeting in some secret yeah. like, location, uh, you know, it's, shaped it's, like a spaceship, and they're talking about... Robot armies and stuff like it's that. It's like a John le Carre novel. It's like a safe house. I'll meet you in the secret exactly. apartment. I'm We're going to get... like Tony Stark's, you know, lair. Yeah. This is like from robots. Ashley Vance's new book on uh, Elon Musk. We're going to get... Ashley's going to join us on the Triangulation in a couple of weeks to talk about his book. So, What a great revelation. Google even has its own chef on call to prepare food for people who are allowed to stay in the apartment. <laughs> I want to stay want in the see, apartment. I want to see this apartment. Like, is it an yeah. apartment? I want to see. Gotta or, be you know, gorgeous. A... Well, the, if you Elon Musk comes to town to meet with Larry, they're not going to put him up in the Sheraton. You have a nice place for him. Greg Zachary, a venture capitalist and friend of Musk, was at one of the meetings. He's described it to Ashley Vance, saying, "I was there once, and Elon was talking about building an electric jet plane that could land off, take off, and land vertically." Larry said, "The plane should be able to land on ski slopes." And Sergey said, "It needs, it needs to be able to dock at a port in Manhattan, man." <laughs> then they started talking about building a commuter plane that was always circling the Earth. <laughs> yeah, like you'd hop onto it and you'd get places incredibly fast. <laughs> uh, Zachary said, "I thought everyone was kidding, but at the end, I asked Elon, are you really going to do that?'" And he said, "Yeah, dude. I think Elon watches." Basically, Avengers movies and Iron Man movies, and then and then he just comes up with ideas like the, you know, the jet, you know, take off and land. Like it's basically right out of Ultron. So, <laughs> actually, like, isn't isn't he our Thomas Edison? I, th you know, well, and now it depends on how you feel about Edison. Well, because yeah, mm -hmm. there are Edison those who uh, uh, quite rightly think that Edison, Edison was, was a, a poser. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. And he, stole a he was a patent troll. So who is he? Stole he? ideas. He is right and left. That's how yeah, he got Franklin? his. That's how he got started. Was was he's our Tesla? He's our Tesla. Tesla. He's Except Tesla. Tesla was kooky. Yeah, Tesla was kind of nuts. We, but you know, Elon is a little. A week ago, we had we were talking about Elon's power wall on Twitter. It was great. And Jason Calacanis, who happens to uh, know Tesla, uh, Tesla, <laughs> no Musk. <laughs> Elon. I'm sure Jason Elon, knows him too. He owns the first Tesla, number one, zero 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 one, uh, and uh, he's building. Jason is invested in a company that's building a demo, of, a two-mile demo of the Hyperloop. Nice. Uh, but he was very bullish on this power wall, he says, and I think he might be right. You don't understand. Elon Musk has just solved global warming. Like, this is that important. What do you I think? I think it could be. I think it could be. I think it could, I think be. It could be, too. He made a compelling case for it. I know I want one. That's, like Elon's a super smart guy, but I think yeah. the most important thing about him is he just comes up with these things, and so a normal person would say, 
well, obviously we're not going to launch a rocket because that's really hard <laughs> right. and super expensive. Right. And we're not yeah. going to build a completely new form of transportation called the Hyperloop. But Elon is like, no, well, we why could not? do that. It turns out this was good. Jason uh, understood this better because he'd invested in it. That really the Hyperloop's be biggest benefit is not people, but freight. Because right. we spend a huge amount of money, and there's a huge global impact oh. to trans shipping stuff from China to the yep. United States in container ships. And what he says, the real plan is to build an underwater hyperloop that trans that that ships. Because so what? The freight gets if something goes wrong, you lost some Apple watches. Not no humans die. So uh, interesting. Well, so I think that the, 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 the hyperloop. I mean, I fast, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. And I fantasize about taking it, you know, going to California in 45 minutes, but it's got to be a claustrophobic experience. I don't mm. think the Hyperloop is a is a good idea for humans. Not to mention the issues of the acceleration. Yeah, <laughs> right. you're basically in a pneumatic tube. I don't want to do it. But 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 again, uh, under the sea. Yeah, it's it's a billion dollars for people moving, and uh, look at our train systems falling apart because nobody takes trains. So it doesn't seem like a great idea. But as a freight mover. Well, and that actually compares to, I, I was reading something the other day about self-driving trucks. So yeah. there's a prototype. Yeah. So the, the actual, the, the benefit of self-driving vehicles might actually be more on the exactly. freight side and yeah, delivery exactly. side than yeah. on human, the human side. Yeah. The apartment is a, is a high rise in downtown Palo Alto with views of the mountains surrounding Stanford's campus. <laughs> It is during such meetings at Google's secretive apartment, I got to talk to Ashley about this, that Musk, Page, and Bryn began to brainstorm ideas that turn into projects. It's kind of our recreation, I guess, Page told Vance. It's fun for the three of us to talk about kind of crazy things. We find stuff that eventually turns out to be real. We go through hundreds or thousands of possible things before arriving at the ones that are most promising. Is that your Wayne's World yeah. voice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Party on! Party on, Elon. Party on, Elon! Okay. <laughs> By the way, the Google, you talk self-driving. The, uh, the Google self-driving cars, uh, 1.7, I don't know, is this one of your numbers, Jeff? I hope not. 1.7 nope, 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 million nope. miles. But? Uh, well, 11 accidents, but in every case it was humans that caused the accidents. The most I'm common sure accidents uh, are in typical, it was mostly on not on the highways, all on streets, um, and uh, mostly like fender, like rear endings. You can't stop somebody from rear ending you. No. Um, and plus, people, you know what? This thing is. A, this thing is a magnet for. Oh my God! Look what's there! Bang! Right. Look, right. Marge! Right. Whoops! So, uh, according, they were, I heard the point made that they that, that, that they should have reported this number earlier. I think yeah, I but I that. think it would have been widely misunderstood because you cannot control people plowing into you. They were T-boned once. They were rear-ended a bunch of times. It wasn't their fault. Although they say, hey, but we're working on ways to avoid places where accidents are more likely to happen or be more careful in intersections like that. But look, they could see 600 feet in front of or 600 yards in front of them. They, they do not much better. Here's the stat. 660,000 people at any given moment in the United States, 660,000 people are behind the wheel and not looking at the road. They're checking their devices. I don't know where that number, that's a great number. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, Distraction.gov. Well, that's got to be real. <laughs> that's what that's totally government legit. is, is distracted. Yeah. Distraction.gov. Uh, that, should, that should be Congress's site. I know. I like that. This is my site. This is my new site. If you're bored, distraction.gov. 10% of all drivers under the age of 20 killed in fatal crashes reported as distracted. At the time of the crash. Um, at any given day, this is from Nopus, N O P U S. At any given daylight moment across the US, 660,000 drivers are using cell phones or manipulating electronic devices while driving. 600, this is from a report from uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Driver electronic use in 2011. We have the most recent year we have these uh, by gender, more females and males, <coughs> considerably more females and males. That's this uh, this one over the black one uh, driver handheld cell phone use by age. It goes down as you get older. 
Uh, only about 1% of folks over 70 use <laughs> cell phones while they're driving. <laughs> Although well, they have other problems. <laughs> that number doubled in uh, 2011 to 2%. 16 to 24, 7%. Uh, it's been as high as 10%. Drivers holding phones to ears while driving. Did anybody, was there, was there ever a survey where they looked at the amount of accidents while people were fiddling with the radio? No, you know, and that's got to be just as high, right? Or arguing or arguing with your husband. Right, or thinking right. or wool gathering. Or reaching behind to, get, right. to, get yeah. to pick up the kid's bottle. Right. The percentage of drivers saying... visibly manipulating handheld devices while driving increased significantly. 0.9% in 2010, 1.3% in 2011. Still not a... But 1%, that's why you get 660,000, I guess. Anyway, that's... This is a... This, I'll have to... This is a good... Uh, bunch of statistics. Nopus. What is Nopus? Some sort of... I guess uh, the... Uh, NOPUS is the National Occupant Protection Use Survey conducted annually by the National Center for Statistics, Statistics and Analysis of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. I guess they actually look. They, like, put observers out there and then extrapolate. Hmm. wonder right. how many there will be when people look at their watches. <laughs> yeah, now that I can... Manipulate my watch, send a heartbeat as I die in a crash. Well, no, the problem. My God, his heartbeat is, died. Since you don't wear it, well, the problem is when you have to to use the watch, you got to go like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, Apple Watch doesn't require that much of a jerk. Doesn't? No. Um. Yeah, and I, you know, you, I guess, uh, yeah, it'd be hard to send a heartbeat while you're driving because it takes two hands. Um, hey, uh, I'm thrilled that Ed Felton is now our uh, deputy yeah, U.S. Crazy. CTO. That is a stunner. That's great news. Ed Felton, a Princeton professor who has done a lot of work. In fact, I think walk, walked the line uh, on uh, uh, copy protection, on DRM. Mm -hmm. uh, really smart guy. He's published more than 100 papers and two books <laughs> on uh, technology, law, and policy. Uh, and a great choice. Yeah, boy, amazing. I mean, Ed is was kind of one of the outlaws who really uh, was pushing, you know, these research into things like uh, like DRM and encryption. And wow, couldn't be a better choice. Now they so they got Megan uh, as the CTO, right? Is Megan Smith CTO? Well, I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And Ed Felton, who is the Robert E. Kahn Professor of Computer Science and Public Affairs at Princeton. He used to work at the Federal Trade Commission and uh, the DOJ, so I guess he has some experience in government. I'm pretty sure that was, uh, someone mentioned that Ed Felton was Aaron Swartz's suggestion as uh, a CTO. <laughs> couldn't be better. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really couldn't be. It's good news. I mean, somebody who really understands what's going on is in has a, has a place at the table. I'm very happy about that. There's some good news. Mm hmm. I'm trying to remember how to use an iPhone. <laughs> you want to do that face? I'm I'm sitting here with one, and I I don't see the it looks Facebook. So, it looks so ridiculous. I know it's so primitive, isn't it? Don't wow! You, don't you feel like iPhones yeah. are kind of primitive? Yeah. I was using someone's the other day, and I it felt like I was using a Barbie phone. You know, from <laughs> you, from your kids. I swear to God, I could not fit my phone. I have the Ken the phone. You have which one? The Ken phone. You have the Ken phone. No, the I, what? Ken no, phone. That's very sexist of you. Trying to add to your joke there. Yes. Oh, sorry, Barbie yeah. Ken. I got Big Ken I got phone. Yeah. Do they have Ken in Canada? Or is he named Bruce or something? <laughs> no, they have Ken. That's called Ken. Pretty sure Ken's still around. Okay. I've been using the Nexus 6, actually. But you have, what, how do you like it? I, I, I love it. You're getting I, ready for Google Fi, aren't you? Well, when I first started using it, I thought, this is way too big. Yeah. Like, it's just way too big. Yeah. I thought I'm never going to get comfortable with it. And now if I try to use the old Nexus 4 or an iPhone, it's I'm so like, small. what are these tiny phones? Yeah. That just yeah. Oh, that's what you I'm mean so by Barbie it phone. It's kind of like just precious and small. So when you lo you didn't lose your phone in Italy, did you? No, I had the phone uh, in my pocket and I had my right. passport in my pocket. Oh, thank goodness you had the passport. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
So what what new computer? I actually was going to put it in my backpack and forgot. Oh. Are you going to get a Chromebook Pixel? I'm thinking about it. You know who's got a Chromebook is my mom. Uh, The place that she lives, the retirement home, is doing a trial of Chromebooks. Um, And so she's got one she's trying out. Yeah. So they've got Wi-Fi throughout the place, and they've given out some Chromebooks. I'm not sure she's going to use it, but it's a good idea. I want to uh, thank one of our viewers for sending me uh, an email. He's a FIRST trainer. You know about FIRST. It's the robotics competition that's done in high schools. Steve Wozniak is a FIRST coach. There's some. It's a really cool thing. The championship uh, uh, is um, is something that high school students work all year towards, and it's, it's just a great way to teach robotics. It has been up to now using Lego Mindstorms, the NLX chip, as its controller, uh, the announcement uh, last, I guess it was in March, uh, that they're going to start using Android. The new platform for FIRST features robot and driver station controls based on a Snapdragon processor, uh, handheld devices, uh, Android devices. They're going to be working uh, in a, on a Java platform, of course, because that's how Android works. So that's really good news because it means there'll be a whole generation of kids who are expert Android programmers. And uh, the Android devices, you always need a smart device to control, you know, these uh, things. Um, and it makes sense because inexpensive smartphone. In fact, Microsoft announced something similar with its uh, Windows 10 for the Internet of Things, mm-hmm. a platform for uh, not just the Raspberry Pi, but also Windows phones to be uh, control, uh, control the, the Raspberry Pi and others. So this is, uh, this is exciting. It's good news, frankly. And... Uh, Glad we stole it away from the Lego oligopoly. So you haven't bought a, a computer yet to replace the uh, stolen one, huh? I have not. Um, I just got a Fortune uh, MacBook Pro, though. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's got one of those inventory labels on the back. That kind of spoils the fun. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of putting my Iron Man uh, <laughs> sticker over top of it. Good. You don't use Android on First Robotics? Well, I think that's the new thing, is the idea that's the new thing. Uh, somebody in the chat room saying you don't do that. Maybe I mis- misunderstood. But uh, that's I'm looking at the first press release that says you do, so I think that's authoritative. I'm going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have uh, kind of the back of the book matter, tools and tips. Oh, and it feels like, like Windows Weekly. Yes, I like this back of the book concept. I like that. I like that nobody idea. really knows what I'm talking about because nobody re- has read magazines in years. Yeah. But What's you're, a book? <laughs> you remember in the old days, the computer magazines at the back of it would have the fun stuff. Mm-hmm. What's right. a page? <laughs> they had the ads for the 3D or the X-ray specs. And the, Comic um, books, it was the good stuff, yeah. 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 One Man Submarine. Yep. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it made out of cardboard. <laughs> what was the, uh, the the little sea people? Yeah, sea monkeys. Remember? Yeah. Sea monkeys. Sea yeah. monkeys. <laughs> Brine shrimp. Yeah. yeah. Um, black soap, right? You'd wash with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's turn right. Turn you black. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gag <laughs> everybody loves. Hey, are you looking for work? Are you looking for employees? ZipRecruiter.com. That's the place to go. If you're hiring and you don't know where the best candidates lie, the good news is the internet makes this a lot easier. The bad news is there's more than 100 job boards out there. How would you like to post to them, every one of them, with one click of the mouse and to Twitter and Craigslist and Facebook? You can with ZipRecruiter.com. Your company's only as good as the people you hire. I know that. <laughs> Believe me. And uh, ZipRecruiter makes it easy. We use ZipRecruiter. Love it. Uh, thanks to ZipRecruiter, you can post to all those sites with a single click of the mouse. Of course, you're going to get a lot more applicants. But here's the beauty part. Their applications come into the ZipRecruiter interface. You don't get phone calls and emails. ZipRecruiter does. And you can easily screen them within that interface Find the right candidates, post once, and within 24 hours, you'll see candidates just rolling in. Over 400,000 businesses use ZipRecruiter, and you could try it now for free. ZipRecruiter.com, we've got a four-day trial for you. ZipRecruiter.com slash twig. If you're in charge of hiring, or maybe you have a small business like me and, and you do it all, you got to know about ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com slash twig. Try it free. For four days. 
Jeff Jarvis is here for the professor of journalism at City University of New York, the author of What Would Google Do? Public Parts, Geeks Bearing News, <coughs> Geeks Bearing <coughs> Gifts. Uh, and, of course, he blogs at buzzmachine.com, and he has... A number for us, I'm sure. I first, I first want. I, I, I want to apologize to Matthew. I did. I, I got all headed up in the discussion. And I really enjoyed it, but I think I got too headed up and in interrupting you. And I want to. And you're nice no, and Canadian. Good. You don't do that. No, so it's I just fine. Want to, I just want to make fine. sure that, that, that I, I was for the discussion, and I always oh, enjoy good. doing this with Matthew. But I, you know, here's oh. what I imagine that this is kind of a, a mirror image of the discussion you had with your students, and that was probably the a hur, you know fast back and forth hurly burly kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, you, so right you just got talk. excited. I do, I do, which is good. Yeah, which is good. But I, I just want to. I well, want we to love the Matthew we love the the back and forth. I want to make sure that we have a group hug, virtual hug. <laughs> <laughs> I got a secret apartment at Palo Alto. You guys are going to visit. Well, it's like it's like. Did you watch the Howard Stern uh, David Letterman kiss? No. No. Was there oh. tongue? Uh, no, no. It was it was Howard tried to kiss Letterman. And what I uh, can only imagine what Letterman. That would be a frightening <laughs> video. Is the, 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 you yeah, do your oh, number, yeah. and I will find the video. You'll find that. Okay, let's see. Which number am I going to do? I'm going to do, well, Sheryl Sandberg, who's back at work amazingly, just announced moments ago that uh, Facebook is going to give its contractors $15 an hour minimum, 15 days off, and 4000 for parental benefits. Is that so good? they are nice people. Does that sound pretty good? Better That's than good. being some poor schlub who gets absolutely no benefits. Yeah. You know, benefits are always good. Here's the late show, or ladies and gentlemen. Do, or we could do as a number. Okay, good. There's the lovely Howard Stern in a three piece suit. Listen to this. Don Rickles is coming on later, right? <laughs> Listen to it, my hero. Wait a minute. What is Letterman's got a Slurpee? They, they gave away milkshakes. Okay. Dave doesn't know I know this. He invited Don to go to dinner with him after the show. You think I was invited? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. But I don't want to go anyway, believe me. Howard? Listen to you two guys. Once again, Yeah. Uh, first of all, I didn't realize it was Carnaby Street night. Second, <laughs> what? what I, I dressed up for you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stay. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no. This is where he tries to kiss him? Yeah. Come, Come over here. What Come are we doing, here. Howard? Come here. Come here. Is this goodbye? Is this our final time together? No. Come here. No, no what are you going to do? Come over here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh, he kisses his hand. He knows. I think he has senses that something, something unpleasant is about to happen. Oh, oh, he's trying to kiss him on the mouth. Oh. I think Letterman is kind of a misanthrope. I've had the, he's like one of those guys who doesn't like to be touched, right? Oh. He's he's he's, like that. He is laughing. He's laughing, but he's crying on the inside. Plus, Howard's like seven feet tall or something. He's he looks huge. Man. He's a scary man. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. The only other number of the week is that every day this week is a palindrome. That's right. In America. Only in the in American America. way of things. Right. Only, only in America. America. It's 5, 13, 15, 5, 1, 3, 1, 5, which is the same backwards and forwards. And it is all week. In America. In America. What would it be? Do you do day, date, month, year in the Canadian Rockies? You know, you know what's funny is some people do and some people don't. Yeah. It's, it's a little... Like we're trapped. In it's Europe. a Britishism. Mm -hmm. I do. I t I after reading Strunk and White, where uh, they uh, E. B. White encourages you to write dates in a sensible way, where the numbers are separated, so there's no confusion. So I I do write my dates 13 May 2015. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a good reason for that because you're separating the numbers. Well, and day, month, year. I mean, month, day, year makes no sense whatsoever. Because it doesn't sort right, right? Yeah. Actually, computer geeks always write year, month, mm -hmm. day. Because then everything and sorts. The fun thing about filling out online forms is sometimes they will want it, like federal things, sometimes they want it year, month, day. I know. Sometimes they want it month, day, year. <laughs> well, and it's very confusing for us Americans when we travel <laughs> on those custom forms. You have to read it carefully. But you know what's odd? I think the American customs forms mm. are also day, month, year, which is hmm, maybe because a lot of furners come in. So, so can I do one more here? So I just, uh, thanks to Vic Condotra, who linked to the Facebook thing. Yeah. I just finally got Facebook working on, oh. on this. You can see. So there's an article here that he recommends. What? I'm going to click wait on a second. So wait. I have to follow wait, Vic. Wait, wait, wait. You got Facebook wait, on... You got Facebook instant articles on your Android now? It looks like an iPhone no, no, no. 4. This is my very old iPhone. This is <laughs> on the iPhone. iPhone, okay. Look how small so, that I, is. I just, I just want you to count. Let's do, 
Leo, you do a one one thousand thing. One See one how long thousand. the story takes okay, to ready? come up. Okay, ready? All right. E click. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand more. Eight one thousand nine nine, nine seconds. <laughs> so on the old phone, it ain't so buttery smooth. Oh, that's the old phone. I'm sure. Wow. Well, I don't know if I could get so uh, if I follow Vic Gundotra, he might put he he put a link. Oh, because you have to share it. One of these instant news stories, right? I guess so. I don't know. I All tried right. to hope the New York Times would come up. This is an NBC story. You don't have to. You can go to Facebook.com slash instant or something. Yeah, we instant. did that, but it didn't. That didn't have the story. Oh, here so it is. That. Here's Vic. The Trouble oh, with that. Almonds from NBC News. Bang. That came right up. Yeah. Okay, but wait a minute. But no, that's the. this is the website. Of course that came That's right not up. instant, I don't think. I want to see. How do I get the. Um, is this Facebook? Sure oh, it is. This is the Facebook. Facebook. That's it. Oh, it yeah, is I didn't the Facebook. Get that. All right, so I, mine is too old. That's why I'm not Yeah, this came it. up right away. I got a web. Okay, that's what it is. By the way, the that's kind of interesting because you wouldn't know you're on Facebook here except for the like button. And This looks like um, there's even ads, NBC News ads. Yeah, there's certain ad formats and all kinds of things. That was that's, That is buttery. That's nothing like what I saw. Thank you. Oh, it's oh, very buttery. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And the videos autoplay as you scroll. They do. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's the video. You know what? This is actually production-wise is very desirable. Oh, to me, great. Jeff, this is like using beautiful. medium. You use medium. Are you gonna? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Tom Rogers almond grow. Part of the story of this is that uh, every almond, every almond, not tr not bunch of almonds, not pound of almonds, every almond that you eat is something like six gallons of water. You know what? I think there's been a scourge of almonds. When I get on the airplane, I miss my peanuts. You never get peanuts no, anymore. You get peanut almonds. Yep. And ugh, can't do the brave. tree nuts no more. I was on a plane, a Virgin America plane, where they recalled the peanuts. They, what? They, <laughs> they were giving us nuts, and they said, "Whoa, no!" Oh, the pilot came on. I'm sorry. We have to give back your nuts. There's a kid on here who's allergic. <laughs> I was not give giving my nuts, nuts back. Yeah, that's why you usually get pretzels on lots of flights. Yeah. This is beautiful, Jeff. It is beautiful. It that's is. one good looking spider, is it not? <laughs> like if that spider had a if that Call spider had a parlor, wow. you would enter it. And you can join the conversation with NBC News Haley Jackson. There she is. She's talking to me, me personally. Yeah. Hi Haley. Selfie. She's doing a selfie. I think this and Facebook thing is gonna catch on. In so vertical I'm video formatted this. for your phone, specifically. I'm going to share this. I can share. Okay, so I can write a this. post. I can send it in Messenger. I can copy the link. I can email. I can tweet it, which is interesting. Well, Facebook and the sharing me. menu. And the sharing menu. I got to give them credit. They they did add a bunch of things to there. It's not just share it with yeah. other people on Facebook. Pinterest so and Twitter. I think they should have credit for that. So I'm going to write. Uh, just if you follow me, and a lot of people do, tap switch. I'm just going to write. Here's an example. An example of what do they call this again? In, uh, instant, art instant articles. Of the new instant. I hate this keyboard. <laughs> news feature from Facebook. Okay. So Josh Benton, who's a really, really good guy, and even just asked on Twitter whether anyone knows the technology <clears throat> behind their speed. Is it prefetching something else? Yeah. Well, it but you know, fast. you saw I loaded it and it, it yeah, came it up right instant. away. I mean, it wasn't like. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah, but of course, Does it it's prefetching on a, on a uh, iPad too. I don't know. I don't uh, believe so. Oh, don't it's only so, an iPhone. So, what do you guys think about uh, um, uh, the big, giant, huge Facebook with tons of resources not doing this on two platforms? They will. Give them a break. Oh sure. Yeah, they will. They will. This is not going to be only on an iPhone. Well, but 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 it's it's just it it, it kind no, of they don't want to roll it out too fast because then you wouldn't get the buttery experience. We it, never got paper. It's it's never. it's one yeah, but you didn't miss anything. It's one it's one <laughs> way to um, control how many people use it, basically, right? Now, do you have any idea whether this was a new version of Facebook that had to come down? Uh, I don't, unfortunately. Or this this was all built in. I just don't know. That's a good question. That was good. That was that was that's very pretty. I thought pretty. that looked it is gorgeous. It's like you, butter. It's like butter. Can you go? Can you go to the New York Times on your Facebook app? And I tried and it didn't. You, you, somebody didn't, has to share okay. it with you, which is although I don't that's, know if I'm following Vic or not. But uh, 
Let me just look real quickly and see if there's an... I think they tell you when there's stuff that's been updated recently. Uh, updates. Recently updated. Did Facebook get recently updated? No. Google Sheets, Slides, and Docs are getting updated. Uh, it doesn't look like that was a recent update. So that's... Uh, when's the last time Facebook... Facebook got updated uh, on May 8th. So that was probably the update. Let's see if they even say in the What's News. They don't say anything. Every update of Facebook app includes improvements for speed and reliability. They update Does the it app mention butter? Tweaks. Buttery. Buttery. All right. Well, I didn't mean to add more time here, but that, I'm glad no, I got I'm a glad demo you did. Of it. That's great. Yeah. Um, Mr. Matthew Ingram, anything you'd like to uh, share as a pick of the week? Um, hmm. You don't have to. I can't remember... I Oh, or, he's, uh, yeah. Did I freeze? I can offer yeah. you one. Um, <laughs> yeah, have I mentioned Google Photos and uploading all my photos? And I know that's not new. We do love that, don't we, though? The search is great. So yeah. I've got personal search turned on. So I've tried things like my photos of Caitlin, my daughter, and it pulls them all up. It's fascinating. It's a, it's a great, just for backup purposes, it's a great solution. You know, I got to show you this. This Flickr, as you know, just updated uh, significantly. Yeah, that's what it's, made me think of it. Its capabilities. And one of the things Flickr does, uh, which is really interesting, is this uh, automatic tagging feature. You have to go mm -hmm. to your camera roll. I'm going to do that right now on my Flickr. And um, uh, let's see. There's So you normally the default would be a show, sort by date taken. But there's you'll see this tab here that says Magic View. And mm -hmm. look how well this does. Animal bird. Here's two birds. Animal cat. Animal dog. This is all done automatically. Animal other. Sometimes there's some mistakes, although there is a donkey there. Uh, architecture. So imagine uploading all your pictures to Flickr, and mm -hmm. these are all uh, buildings, uh, cities, sculpture. Did a pretty good job uh, of that. Towers. Look at that. They're I all gotta towers. Think, I got to think Google could do that too, right? Google like, should do this. Absolutely. As good, if not yeah. Food beverage, food meal, food vegetable, food other, landscape, field. Yes, those are all fields. Forest, mountain. Yeah, those are all mountains. Rock. Well, a pyramid isn't a rock, but it's rock like. It's rock colored. Here's shore. Look at that snow sunset pretty impressive if you use Flickr, and Flickr's free up to i think a terabyte of storage mm -hmm. um i think this is pretty darn impressive i have to say though i was a big Flickr user and uh well they changed the ui which bothered me but also their mobile apps in my experience are terrible they're yeah. so if i want my phone to automatically upload things which i do right. I want to upload to Google. I want to upload to Dropbox. It happens in the background, no problem. Every time I try to do that with Flickr, it takes forever, and yeah. then something fails. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have, you know, everybody has backup, free backup now. Everybody. So yeah. I just I back up everything everywhere. Here's all black and white photos. This is really pretty sweet. I've got everything at Google, everything at Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have the backup. Anyway, that's a, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, uh, I actually wanted to show people that. I think we showed that on the radio show. Uh, Chris Marquardt told me about it, our photo guy. <laughs> Jeff, since you obviously have an extra thing, go ahead, throw it in. I was just going to say that Tunnel Bear now has an app for Chrome. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw that. So what is Tunnel Bear? Tunnel Bear is a VPN-ish thing. So you can yeah. watch BBC from the U.S. <laughs> or you, Matthew, can watch U.S. stuff from Canada. Uh -huh. Tunnel Bear is great. Shh, won't tell. Won't in in tell. violation of every law Shh. known to man. This is why, David Cameron, this is exactly why we have no free speech now. It's because of you. Shh. People use Tunnel Bear uh, during, uh, what was it, FIFA, the World Cup? or mm -hmm. I know it was a very popular way to uh, watch. Curtail online tracking. Behind. It's VPN. And uh, I don't know. Have, has you, have you used it? I haven't used it. I've used it. It's great. So it's fast enough that you could watch video? Just works really well. Nice. Yep. Yes. Yes. It's so easy. Uh, 
You get a, a decent amount free. That's, I mean, it's a very nice. The service is great for the company. Um, and here's the deal. You know, uh, the really good legitimate use is uh, at an open Wi-Fi access spot. So put it put it in Chrome, turn it on, and you go to Starbucks, and mm -hmm. you can now browse with impunity. Exactly. I think that's uh, great. Tunnel Bear is also Canadian. So just he looks Canadian. It's a nice Full guy. Bear. We have a lot of bears. Oh, you have to create a Tunnel Bear account. Have you ever used Hola? No, what's that? Hola is a Chrome plugin, and it's effectively really does the same nice. thing. It's really nice. Well done. It knows where it kind of it, it senses that you want to go be illegal right now and does it for you. I want to be illegal right now. <laughs> right? Is that the one, Matthew? Yeah, you can say, Dude, I want to pretend that I'm from in Britain, or I want to pretend I'm. In we don't the US, condone so this pretend. kind of behavior, but. I'm just saying, if you're the type of person, for personal reasons, who has to pretend to be from a different country, right? These yeah, maybe, maybe you're a freedom fighter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Doctors without borders, that kind of thing. Exactly. You're worried that Idi Amin will find out where you live and track you down. All right, Tunnel Bear and Hola with an mm -hmm. H. I'm tunneling privately to the United States. Oh, you, yeah, okay. Little, give you a little data to get started. So don't use this until uh, you need it, right? Right. Yeah. I've used it when I'm out of, out of, out of the country in a hotel room right, to get the things that I actually do pay for. Yeah. Tunneling privately to the United States. Start browsing. Here's a little data. Change countries. Oh, this is how you change countries. You get a little tunnel bear button. And you could say U.S., U.K., Canada, Germany, Netherlands. Wow, you got a lot of countries to choose from. That's cool. 250 gigabytes. A m so you get as much as uh, 250 to 500 gigabytes a month, I guess. And then if you want more, you can pay for it. But, yeah, for like an emergency, that's good. Thank you, Jeff Jarvis, City University of New York, buzzmachine.com. you the greatest, man. Love, love having you on the show. And thank you also, Matthew Ingram. I feel the same way about you. I'm so glad that you're at Fortune. Great to have you on, Matthew. Yep. I was never worried. We knew a premier quality person like you would be working within moments. Did Thanks. you? I bet you had to. I bet it was kind of fun. You had all these offers. You could field all these offers. You know, come it actually, you know, once I got over the sort of the, the grief uh, of yeah. the way that things ended, uh, it was nice to hear from lots of people yeah. who I hadn't considered before so it was a little like being around at your own funeral yeah. um, it's validating and, yeah no it was nice you deserve to be validated so that's great thank you thank you for being here fortune.com matthew i on the twitter thank you all for watching we do this week in google every uh wednesday right after windows weekly usually it's you know it's supposed to be 1 p.m pacific 4 p.m eastern time i'd say it's more like 1 30 you won't miss anything if you tune in at 1.30. Let's be honest. Let's be fair. Yeah. Yeah. 1.30, 4.30. That's a 20.30 UTC. Twit.tv. If you can't watch live on-demand audio and video, always available after the fact at twit.tv slash twig or where you get your stuff. Is this, uh, is it, uh, it's, yes, it's too, I was going to, I foolishly was going to say something about the T-shirt, but it's gone now. Oh. It's gone. I should have said something yesterday. Let me just see. Teespring.com slash twit. Ah, oh, it's sold out. What? Nab it. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, well, we'll do something else. We always do something cool. Teespring. Yeah, just keep that, bookmark that, and cut, check by once in a while. TWE spring.com slash twit. That was the 10th anniversary twit shirt. The new screensavers is Saturday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Father Robert Ballas here. Hosting, if you've got a question for Father Robert, uh, we do we do take uh, calls on the show. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you just have to uh, email us ahead of time to let us know you have a question. We'll pick you and call you. And because we want to set up Skype, make sure it's working. The uh, email address is newscreensavers at twit.tv. Sorry? Are you going to bring back call for help? Uh, you know, I thought about it briefly, and then I thought, you know what, I don't need to, because really that's what we do with the uh, radio show, the tech guy show, is all calls yeah. all the time. True. So that's unnecessary. That's when the first time I was on your show was in the basement of the Omni TV building in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Oh. Did you come How many in? years ago was that? I did. 
I came oh. in. I was at the Globe, and Amber MacArthur brought me in. That must for a be segment. where we met. Yeah, I'll be diggity danged. That's great. Yeah, that was many, many, many moons decades ago. ago in a galaxy far away. Well, it wasn't that far. Probably 2004, 2005, something like that. Ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. We're not bringing it back. This is a brand new variety show for a new generation of tech enthusiasts. And it's a lot of fun, and I hope you'll watch. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. <laughs>will be on the show next week and then the following week i will be there yay, yay google io i didn't mention our google io coverage 9 30 right. a.m on a thursday two and a half hours may 28th yeah it's gonna be a long one